into picks and bands for game number one here between SK Telecom and CJ Antis. Yep. Well, There's the Kogma band. Yeah, I'm not surprised to see that at all. Uh, as I said, that's it's been a w in a weird place for SK Telecom where they don't want to they don't want to use early picks on it, uh, but they have trouble playing against it because of how strong it is right now. And if you're Bang, you want to play that Corky. That's a champion that you're 26 and one on professionally. You right. can do well on it. So take away the lane counters so you can continue playing to your strengths. Rumble Band against Marin. A uh, bit interesting. I'm not sure if SKT would actually first pick the Rumble. That'd be a bit surprising. There's a Rise Band. Makes a little bit more sense, but some strong picks available. So going for the jungle. So we see huh. the Rek'Sai Band out. They first pick the Evelyn. They, I think they see Trick in the lineup right now, and they're thinking, all right, new guy. <laughs> you're not getting the Rek'Sai, and you're going to have to play against an invisible jungler, and Bengi is a is a jungler that is very good at pathing. He knows how to get that information in. So they think, well, if we just know where Trick is all game, because our Evelyn is in their jungle constantly putting down wards so that our lanes can play aggressively, you're going to have a very hard time countering that style of play, and especially when you don't know where the Evelyn is with the Tremor sense. So interesting strategy from SKT here, definitely targeting Trick. Yeah. So do you just take this Braum right off the bat, worrying a little bit that they may grab the uh, mid Ezreal on the second rotation? Looks like they want to take the Corky away from Bang as well, and they will. So bot lane picked up by CJ. So this is smart from CJ. They're on the red side. Now they take the Corky early, one of Bang's best champions, but also one that synergizes very well in a siege or poke composition with the Ezreal. So Basically, you're now threatening a Runeglaive Ezreal yourself, and we know that Coco's no slouch on the Ezreal, right. and you're taking a counter to the Runeglaive Ezreal at the same time with the Braum and the Unbreakable to block a lot of that damage. Well, Maokai Alistar smart picks up pickups too, because Shy is not exactly the strongest player we've seen on that counter pick Fizz that's been very popular to use against the Maokai, and why not grab your support? You know, why not just hold as much information as you can? Yeah, and of course, Wolf, Gaining some MVP points last week for his Alistair play, certainly very good on that pickup. And remember, we did see some Nidalee bans against Trick in the last series. So known in solo queue for that Nidalee. Uh, CJ is not a, a team that plays well with Nar, so that's a bit of a concern. They want to have a winning matchup, but Shai's Nar hasn't been up to snuff when we compare it to a lot of the other Nar players in this league. Yeah. Now lately, Bang has been diversifying that champion pool a little bit. It was a lot of Corky Siver for the vast majority of the season. A little bit of Vayne here and there. He's going to lock it in today, but we did also see the Lucian last time, too. Yep, the Vayne, and they played Vayne and Runeglaive Ezreal together. Yes, they did. So, do you take it here? You have to be scared. There's a Corky Nidalee. What are you going to do against a poke composition right now? You've got some good engage. You have Alistair, you have Evelyn, you have Maokai. So they're saying we're going to be able to get into that back line if you pick the Runeglaive Ezreal. Azir is taken away from Coco. This is much more of a Coco counter pick than it is a pick for Faker. Faker's right. been fine on the Azir, but I wouldn't say it's one of his best champions. But you can't let Coco have Azir. He's too good on it. Yeah. And we'll see. Faker's had a little bit of time to improve on that. Even though it hasn't been one of his strongest. What are we going to see CJ pick up for the mid lane, though? We saw an interview last season, but not this season. Hmm. Well, the Cinder is an interesting idea. CJ mulling it over, and they uh, might as well go for that Ezreal. I, think I it's don't be know. The this is going to be really hard for them to deal with. The I think They've got an Evelyn flank to deal with. They have Maokai targeted initiation. They have a long-range initiation from Alistair, and we've seen that uh, Wolf really has no qualms in terms of flash headbutt polving. And while you can't escape from that, if you can see it, he can do it so quickly that it will be sometimes hard for the Ezreal to avoid. But they build up this composition. CJ goes for a kiting composition. They want to poke. Now, that said, they do not have good engage. They have to get to the dragon first. It's another one of these poke comps that we see with low primary engage. It's all about kiting right here for them. And that means if SK Telecom starts a dragon before they have a time for before they have a real chance to poke, then there's not much they're going to be able to do to stop it in time because they can't actually get crowd control beyond 
hoping that Mad Life or Shy get a good flash engage. Uh, and that's only if they have these champions up. On the other hand, SK Telecom, again, great engage, great skirmishing. They've got excellent protection for Vayne uh, with the Azir ult in place. So Bang going to be relied upon to do a lot of damage in this one. Well, it certainly worked out for him well in the past. And uh, we'll see how much Bangy can try to abuse the new guy. We'll see how much he can make Trick's life miserable here as we move into game number one between SK Telecom and CJ Antis SKT looking to continue that record, continue a perfect season as far as match score goes here in Champion Summer and CJ looking for a majorly big win, which they could really use right now. It's time to get in the game and see who can take it. All right, welcome to Summoner's Rift. SK Telecom versus CJ Antis. And this should be a pretty good one. Yeah, I'm excited to see Trix Nidalee. We don't have a lot of Nidalee junglers uh, in Korea compared to a lot of the other regions. And in this particular game, we saw it banned uh, when he played in his last match. So definitely there's something that people think to fear there. Yep. But he doesn't have great lanes to gank for, honestly. Uh, the Nar and the Ezreal and, and the Braum not perhaps providing as much hard crowd control instantaneously as you would want, right? You have to close that gap with the Nar. You have to stack up the concussive blows with the Braum. There's really nothing in the mid lane to speak of. So it's going to be a harder game to play in Italy. And I, I thought the trick did well the last time he played with this roster with the Echo. But then again, he had Coco to help him out with his ganks with TF. He had he, he had a, a Maokai in the top lane. It was a lot easier to get good ganks because his lanes naturally set him up for that. So this is going to be a real test, I think, yeah. for him. Very true. Also, it's not against Spenu. So yeah, there's also too. it's against SK Telecom, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of a difference in team quality between Spenu and SK Telecom. Last time I checked, they were about as far apart on the standings as you could be. So Faker just going to set up for some nice juicy Raptors with a sapling stack, double stacking, and it will be a lane swap as we see Bang move in to freeze the top side, and that'll be about it. No real chance for Madlife to invade here. They will be just taking that red buff. Ooh, interesting pathing going back to the Krugs. Something you rarely see for SKT. So maybe being a little tricky right now. And where are they going to go from this point forward? We'll see. Bang has a nice lane freeze up in top. Right now, looks like Marin's going to recall and then just go right back to lane. And Faker, of course, putting a lot of pressure on this Coco early. That lack of wave clear for Ezreal is going to make it pretty easy for Faker to take an early lead. You know what, Doa? I feel like every time somebody picks a low wave clear champion against Faker, I mean, we saw the Koot Tigers do this. They tried to get the Cassie up here. They tried to get the Cassidy. in. Yeah. And it just doesn't work. Faker pushes you out of lane. He takes your tower, and then he starts running around the map, killing everybody. So I think we've seen more success uh, get for mid laners that take a more control mage approach that makes it so Faker can't abuse you in the laning phase yeah. due to his aggressive play style. Well, this is something that already takes advantage of Trick, right? Is that all this pressure in the mid lane is kind of saying, hey, you know, come and try to make an early play. And, you know, if you do, you're trying to do it against Faker, and that can be really tough. And if you don't, you're going to lose a little bit of time in your own jungle with that early farm. Yeah, it's also just intimidating. Yeah. The, the mind games of having to deal with Faker's pressure are not going to be easy for a new jungler. Yep, very true. Looks like Trick may be coming in from behind there to go after Marin and Wolf. Space and Madlife right there. Throws in the spear, misses though. Only hits that minion and there's a ward there to spot him anyway. Yeah, saw him coming. And that's the, that's the trouble here. Where, where do you go to reliably land the spear? Well, I mean, SK Telecom already has good wards in the river to see where Trick is going. So there's not much mystery as far as like how safe Faker might be. And look at this. Very. I look at how SKT is playing right now. They just want to push the lanes. Yep. They're they're trying to move across the board. They didn't go for a safe lane freeze. Of course, Vayne is a champion that is a 
very strong in a 1v1 if left alone in a lane swap. And extremely good duelist. Let's look at some see. stats right there. Mad Life has actually been having a great season. He has, he's number two at 346 assists, actually, in this league. So Yeah, and he's got it over a 70% win rate on that Braum, too, which is pretty amazing, as there's not a lot of Braum players in the league right now. Wolf gets stunned by the Braum pass and takes a little bit of damage. Well, we have been seeing more and more Braum players as a reaction to the fact that Moonblade and Ezreal is a big part of the draft these days. Yeah. So that is definitely something that is affecting Braum's competitive pick rate. Nice zoning from Mad Life Bengi. there, kept him from Bengi getting that. Uh, yeah, he's going to go right after Trick, though. Trick hits him with the spear, but still on the run. Yeah, that point blank spear, though, just not going to do any damage. So Bengi yep. confidently moving forward. He's also the one with the chilling smite should he need to use it. So has actually a combat smite to contest with Trick, even though it was down. Both the jungler smites were down with that little scrimp. Uh, skirmish occurred so uh, faker doing a number this is how you have to play this is what we didn't see against the Ezreal in our last series oh and we may see a bit of a dive here yeah. onto coco here we go coco in a little bit of trouble bengi coming in as well there's the knock up right after the flash was used in first blood goes to bengi nice patient play from wolf waiting until the flash was used by coco to use that trick gets bounced out by wolf they're gonna go in shy came down as well but faker zoning with those sand soldiers mad life over the wall though not gonna get a chance to really make a big difference here though as he just tosses out a q and that's gonna be it well it was a very easy dive to call again they were pushing up in the bottom side marin uh was thinking about heading back that freed up wolf to go into the mid lane and they knew exactly where Trick was because Bengi had just seen him walk up in further into the top side of the jungle. So there was no chance that he could have been there. Shai's TP was down. That was it. They, they had all the information to very safely make that play. And Faker again punishing a champion that can't push back early. Yeah, pretty much. Coco getting a little bit of time now to catch up in CS, but he's still a ways back. Yep, and he, he has to go for the Trailblazer. So there's not really any combat stats to speak of. Faker moving towards that Morello Nomicon very rapidly. I guess we're not going to see the Nashor's Tooth early this game. Hmm. Yeah, Faker just going for more pure damage. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Wolf, we may see another dive here. Bengi coming in as well, too. There's a recall from space. They see it. Is the minion wave gonna push in time? Bengi's gonna just delay it with the hate spikes, it looks like. There we go, coming in, there's a Valkyrie Wolf. Can he get the headbutt pulverized? Trying to get close enough, they get the flash. Yep. That's really all they wanted, I suppose. And Marin just gonna TP immediately into top. Could uh, be... He could get dove, though. Absolutely he could. They oh. know where Bengi is right now. What, what, what? No, 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 Shai. no. I feel like this is a really easy dive opportunity. They know he's there, he's killing their minions, but I guess that's it. I guess they're not gonna do it. Not a fast enough reaction from CJ. And SKT, they're just going to take the first dragon, I guess. Wow, so... Bizarre. Yeah, very, very strange. A plan to Faker here coming into the mid lane. He's going to get some vision from that ward, though. SKT looking pretty solid in the early moments of this game. Early minutes. One dragon. Got that first blood onto Bengi. Well, and look at this, too. They just keep on threatening. Uh-oh, Coco's trapped. He uses that arcane shift, but he's got no flash. And there's a kill for Marin. Faker picks up the assist. And, I mean, you push in the lane, and you start taking advantage of these guys. And Coco's flash just came up. I think they got him, like, seconds before he was able to use that summoner. Well, they would have the timer on that, so they knew there was a very narrow window to make that play. And they, made, yeah. they managed to make it happen. They have enough crowd control to do it quite easily. Faker doesn't have to burn a summoner. Faker doesn't have to burn an ult at all. So it's all going SK Telecom's way. And you know, Trick is, uh, he has not been there when it comes to actually countering this action. He's been, he's just getting out jungled by Bengi right now. He's giving up the information that SKT needs to make some wow. very convincing plays. And it's a very maybe fast a, turret. a nine minute turret, which when you consider the way that turrets have that, that protection before eight minutes is pretty impressive. Yeah. SKT, Bang and Wolf still hanging out in the bot lane. Looks like they'll be just fine. The blue buff does successfully get handed over to Coco, which is kind of a nice relief. Oh, checking for the other blue. Ooh, space gets very low here. 
Well, Space has been alone in this lane the entire time, but that means that Bengi has been able to ward with Wolf all the way around the lane. Look, they even have that ward still of course, in that little brush, so they can tell exactly if anyone's coming down there. Yeah. So this opens the vein up to just be, go kind of go nuts. They know exactly whether Trick or Bad Life are going to be there, and Corky has just been on his own down here for the most part. And when Trick and Bad Life had a chance perhaps to dive that top side, they shied away from it. Yep, and the first turn of the game taken by Faker, just pushing Coco back. 30 CS ahead right now. Immediately drops at his ear turret there as well. Yeah, and he knows exactly where Trick is. He's got a ward in the Raptor pit, so easily dodging that spear. Yeah. And now this is where Coco no longer has an effect on the game. This is where Faker starts to really just dominate the map. You guys, he's gonna, he can go back, he can buy, he's gonna push the wave up, and then also, Bengi has total freedom. Guys, Bengi and Wolf just gonna do what Ooh. they like, go into the enemy jungle, put the wards down now that there's not a mid turret and Coco can't get forward. Coco has to play super scared as he will not most likely have enough information about his own jungle to know if he's going to get ganked from behind. Yeah, whoa, <laughs> that spear came through just a millisecond too late, you know. And all this pushing in the mid lane too has really let Marin have a very easy time up in top lane. Perfectly content with his single kill of the game so far. Oh boy. Found Bengi. Yep. Well, Bengi found the scuttle crab. And Bang and Wolf getting to be very aggressive in the bottom lane too. Bang pulling ahead in CS. So, yeah, Trick just not able to put out all these fires that SKT is starting all over the map. Now, I think that their draft plan of first pick Evelyn well, taking away Rek'Sai basically really messed with Trick. Yeah. A very good. Okay. Whoa. Faker, meanwhile, kills Coco with a little bit of help from Marin yet again. Not even needing to teleport for that one. Nope. Marin's just been roaming all over the map into the mid lane multiple times. Uh, CJ didn't have any wards in their own jungle to even detect where he was. Yeah. Wow. And Faker's just going to go after this tier two. He may get a tier two before 12 minutes. So I think between the data, that has been given to us by Kuro and CJ. You are no longer allowed to pick low wave clear laners against Faker if you want to live. Seriously. Wow. I mean, you really can't lose a lane harder than Coco's lost mid. It's, it's impressive. And yes, he's been targeted. Yes, he's been camped. But this is the price you pay. You, you can camp the Ezreal early and get away with it. Yep. Because he just doesn't do any, now he has Rune Blade at least, but for most of this game he wasn't doing any damage. Marin getting that ward up in top, making sure there was no lane gank coming in from Trick. Trick was just skirmishing a bit with Faker in the jungle though, so I suppose he knew he wasn't up there already. Uh, and this is also the best way to play against CJ Entis, because you know that if you shut down Coco, no one else is going to be carrying this team. Very true. Uh, Space is good as a positional AD carry. He's a good for supplemental damage. Shy plays a lot of tanks, but they are insanely reliant on Coco. He does more damage as a percentage of his team than any other mid laner in this league. If he is shut down. Uh oh, and Shy gets caught. Marin and Bengi coming in for this one, and Shy has a flash. Going to use it. Is he going to escape? Spear comes through. Bengi dodges it with the flash. Going to try to get closer to Shy, and he will. Faker unable to steal that kill. Just there, they're playing Ring Around the Rosie on that little island in the top lane. Someone is going to get him sooner or later, and it is, I guess, Bengi. In the yes. End, denying Faker. Yep. Now well, Space knocked against the wall there, and he could be in a lot of trouble. Where's the condemn? Space taking a lot of damage as he exhausts his Mad Life goes in onto Bengi. Can't get over. Oh, nice knockup. Good CC Here's from Marin. Mad Life, and that's a kill. Marin comes down, though. Not close enough to save Bang, but they are going to get space. Who's going to get the kill? Looks like they'll give that one over to Marin. That is his second or third of the game. Meanwhile, they did take out top lane turret as well. Yep, wow. Bengi, Bengi stayed at the top lane to continually put pressure and get some advantage off, off of Shy dying. Marin then is freed up to use his teleport, comes right back in from the tri brush behind the turret to help finish up the kill. Probably could have been a little bit better coordinated right there. He seems like they thought he was going to be there a bit sooner, but. Oh, Marin pops that ultimate, could be in a little bit of trouble. Trick circling from the side. Here comes Wolf, soaks up that Q for Braum. Now he's in trouble, very low health there. Will he need to use that ult? A little bit too late, he's going to go down. Wolf gives his life for his top laner, the ultimate support sacrifice. 
Well, he didn't have his ult right there. Yeah, Chose so. not to use the flash. Thought he was dead anyway. Wasn't going to be able to get under the turret in a meaningful capacity. So Trick picks up a kill. Second of CJ's this game. No, just that one Dragon rather for SKT. It's like they could be thinking about another one right now, but they want the blue buff first. Yeah, they could trying to zone with those Sand Soldiers. Yeah, True doesn't have any mana. Yeah, and that blue buff releashes back towards SKT, and who's going to get it? Looks like it did go over to Bengi. Couldn't give it to Faker, but at least they kept it away from CJ. Well, they have their own blue buff to go after right after they take this dragon. Yep. Bang has that wave nice and forward in the lane, so they're going to try and steal it with a true shot barrage. Here we go. Oh. No. Not enough AP yet to really do enough to spike the dragon with the damage and get it low. Yeah, pretty much. And now this bottom turret looks like it could very well go down. Space trying to do what he can. Looks like he'll save the turret for the moment anyway. Here comes Mad Life from the side. He doesn't have his ult quite yet. Wolf trying to zone. Trick is there as well too. Wolf pops the ultimate, maybe in a lot of trouble. There's the stun. Never mind. Damage, a, percent pop, damage. Pop the ultimate, yeah. No. Percent damage reduction in CC clear is a pretty strong feature. Helps a lot, doesn't it? Shy on the run. Faker trying to come up and make a kill there to his advance from Marin. Shy with no flash to use here to try to get away, and Meganar is over. It's going to be another kill for SK Telecom. The only question, who gets it? Mid laner or top laner? Looks like it'll be Faker this time around. Shy has really been abused in that top lane as well. Well, this is what happens. Your tower goes down, then Faker is in all of your side lanes, killing your bands. Yep. And can't and play this way. You have to contain Faker somehow. Otherwise, when he gets out on the map, he knows how to snowball huge advantages. Bengi right there to protect Bang and Wolf. Trying to save this turret. We'll see if Wolf decides to go in. Yeah, they can't really do this because there Coco's would be there. a TP from Shy once he respawns. So yeah. Bengi was just trying to play defensively, seeing if they would die because they can't really commit to a fight down here. This is smart of CJ, though. There's no wave clear on this bottom side right now. So go for it. Space has the sheen. Coco has the rune glaive. So you can poke out very nicely and take the tower. Nice move by CJ. That is a really good response to that situation. Yeah. So they at least get a turret. Baker's still pushing that mid lane pretty heavily. And taking a lot of the jungle away from Trick as well. Yeah, interesting interesting build from Baker this game. Very early home guard boots on this Azir. He just wants, the idea here is that he goes back, because he has so much ground to cover to get up to the mid lane, and what he wants to do is just push and push and push and then roam. Yeah. So get into get into the mid lane as fast as possible with the home guard boots so you can maintain pressure. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh oh don't you may not want to step in those traps, bang. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Da 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 face check and wolf pops the ultimate immediately. It'll be okay for now, and Bang enters the fray. There's a flash from Mad Life trying to get that stun passive off. Space goes deep. He Valkyries in, gets exhausted immediately. Shy TP's down, and SK Telecom just backs away. Used a couple summoners, but they got CJ, I think, to commit a bit more there. Yep, and they got the TP out without any effect whatsoever. Faker back in the mid lane. So going back to the home guard, when you have the home guard and you can continually push, you say, well, okay, why would I pick home guard over another damage item if I actually want to to uh, to uh, snowball this game. But honestly, because the idea is that Coco will always be in the mid lane because he has to deal with the minion wave, you're always going to be a man up once Faker starts roaming. So do you necessarily need the extra damage? No, because it's not an even fight regardless. So having that extra presence on the map is much more valuable for him right now. He recognizes this, and Coco has been a total non-factor as a result. Pretty much. Baron up in a minute 20, and you'd have to imagine SK Telecom will be thinking about taking that one pretty patiently in the next five minutes or so, 10 minutes or so. But there's really no rush, is there? No. Okay. <laughs> no, there's not. You got a lot of ways to win this game. Yep. Uh, Q doesn't connect. Trick not really able to make a play either. SKT has to play a little bit careful. Wolf doesn't have his ultimate right now.
Bang getting plenty of time to farm, getting a nice lead on CS. Still no kills yet, but at any moment, this Vayne could just go off in a team fight. Well, at the very least, too, in terms of going off in a team fight, Coco's starting to get up there, so it's going to come down to execution from SKT because they don't have an easy way to block the True Shot Barrage. Uh, try as you might, it will still be powerful in the late game. Marin has gone for the Frozen Heart early because he's been in this lane with Gnar. So the magic resist really isn't there. Oh, ult used by Bang. He wants to try something, but not quite able to get there in time. He really wants this tier one. Yeah. But uh, space is just going to react, fall back with that Trinity Force. He has the Vamp Scepter, so the damage not going to be a big factor. CJ actually going to get their blue buff. That is pretty huge for Coco's Ezreal. Space was definitely ready for that. All in from Bang. So if you're if you're SKT, still don't have that magic resist and oh okay yeah time for this sneaky is smart. Baron this is smart just go ahead and do it why not oh well, they can always back off too and Shy is going to come in and check it I don't know if he actually saw that being done or not I don't think so because it hadn't really lost much health before they left it may have just caught a little bit of the regen but that would have been it yeah. uh, Barrage comes through. Clear the wave, and Marn's going to TP in. What's the play going to be? Ah, they want that turret, and they want space coming in now. I don't think space is making it out of this one. Valkyrie, there's the twist advance. Marn just knocking him back, and that lets Bang catch up with the ultimate, the tumble, and an easy pick. For SKT, Marin picks up yet another kill. Yep, they have a deep ward in the lane, and this is the power of getting that mid tower down early, is it lets you easily set up these teleport plays to snowball off of. When they have so many wards in, they know that there's nobody there. Uh, so Marin takes a very low risk dive. They get the tower, and it, look at the timing too. Right as the dragon spawns, they're able right. to chain a kill into the low tier one, into the dragon in one fell swoop. They don't need Faker up there because they see Shy. Shy has no TP, and you know you're going to win that 4v4. So go ahead, SKT, just making extremely clean calls all over the map. Yeah, Marin picked up his righteous glory with that recall too. So if they didn't have enough engage, well, now they've got even more. Baker checking the bush, dodges the spear somehow, comes in. He's going for the 1v2, gets knocked up by Madlife. Needs to be a little bit careful there. Doesn't want to get stunned by the passive. Wolf's just going to help him get out. Yeah, he's not going to be worried about his support in a jungle. Look at Trick. <laughs> he's going so. a rod of ages. Trick is so far away from being a threat. He's gone for a stacking item in a game that they are clearly losing. Yeah, I don't know if that's the best thing to pick up in 22 minutes. I do like it more on uh, Jungle Diddly than I used to because now you get more AP out of the item uh, with all those changes to the AP item. So that's... I do think that it's nicer on her because I guess my sort of feeling was the HP wasn't that necessary a component because in the late game, whether you have that HP or not, you're still going to get popped if you miss position on Nidalee. It doesn't actually affect that much. But having that AP, the extra poke damage, and the extra heal, too, can be quite useful. It's true. And the extra mana, too. But at the That's same nice. time, I mean, when you're behind, can oh, yes, you really it's, justify it? No. I don't think this is a good item in this instance, but I do think the Rod of Ages is now better on Jungle Middle. All right. Well, SKT looks like they want to fight this ultimate used by Bengi. Space backing off, Marin trying to come in from the side. This flash is used, Faker doing a lot of damage in that choke. True Shot Barrage comes through, but can Coco do enough? Space very low. Coco does manage to zone people away, but not before Marin gets a kill. Twist advancing back onto Shy to get out. Marin's still in a lot of trouble though. Oh, barely oh. dodges that Q, and Shy doesn't hit him with the ult. Oh, that Gnar ult could have netted CJ a kill for sure. And you see how squishy Marin is right now when it comes to dealing with the magic damage. We look at CJ, their three main damage threats are Nidalee, AP Ezreal, and Corky. He has built exclusively for the lane with the fast frozen heart. So he needs to be, they need to be very cautious about how they approach these fights. They do Good not point. have an Aegis done yet. It's coming from Bengi, it is coming. Yep. But no one really with a lot of magic resist. I think this is a bit cocky from SKT, but I don't. Oh, Bang finds Shy. There's the flash. I don't think. Well, and uh, looks like the hop will do it. Oop, they caught Faker. See, Faker saw Madlife clearing out a ward and thought he could come around the corner, but Trick was there. I'm wondering if that was what was going to happen, and it did. It did. Yep. Well, Coco. 
Sp with space there, yeah, Bang can't fight that. Looks like they might lose this top turret. Yep, they will. Uh, they they don't have the wave clear to actually get away with this. Well, we'll see how fast Marin can get there, but they need to start grouping and sieging. So CJ at least having the right idea. Bengi is there, but he'll be seen if he comes through the river by a pink ward. But they yep. know the pink ward's there, of course. He's got no way to get in. There's a pink ward in river and a pink ward in tri brush. Yeah. Oh, Marin coming in. He wants to go in on a trick. There's the exhaust use as well. Wolf thinking about coming in. Bengi from the side. They're going to go ahead and kill Trick. Now Space in a lot of trouble. Another kill for Marin, and Madlife going to go down soon as soon as somebody finishes him off. There we go. Bang with the kill. Coco had and no mana at the end of zero. that fight to actually keep fighting or slinging some spells to do the damage. So as soon as Marin was able to go in and pop his Righteous Glory, there just wasn't much they could do any longer. The major source of damage had gone away, and now it's just going to be an uncontested Baron. Yep, and Marin just going to zone Coco out as he tries to take this one, but it's not going to get it. A lot of low health members for SKD. Wolf. Barely makes it out with his life, but it looks like that's going to be a Baron on all five members of SK Telecom. Yeah, let's take a look at this one again, because Bengi actually, I mean, CJ has the right warding to do this, but with Coco at such low mana, and Trick just gets caught out, which gives Bengi time just to walk up. He doesn't have to be the primary engage from the flank right there. Pretty much. Marin does the Whoa. work for him. And Faker, Faker just killed Coco in a 1v3, by the way. Here comes Maokai from behind, though. Faker extremely low health, needs to be really careful here. So that just happened. Maybe we'll get a replay of that. It was Faker just bursting down Coco, basically. Well, is he going to take his blue buff, too? Maybe. Doesn't look like it. Not at the moment, anyway. Now we probably can. But with that Baron, SK Telecom pushing ahead, burning through that inhibitor turret like nothing. And that inhibitor, I really doubt, is going to last very long. Madlife does have his ultimate, so if CJ wants to engage, they can try something. That, and Faker just going to go for blue right now. <laughs> uh, this team is uh, taking out the the inhibitor, no problem. Yep, pretty they, far ahead. Faker just cuckoo for Coco buffs this game. <laughs> cuckoo for Coco's buffs. Wow, that was beautiful. <laughs> that was that was one of your best. Works better because he's also playing a bird. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> he's cuckoo for Coco's buffs. <laughs> he's definitely cuckoo for Coco's buffs this game. Well, I think they're cuckoo for everything Coco has at this point. Oh, what do you say? Another SK Telecom game where I, I, I really think, I, after the Coup Tigers match, I was like, nobody's going to be this dumb to do this again. Nobody's yeah. going to just let Faker take over a game. Well, Monty. Yeah, that's a 1v3. Up, oh, just pushing him out. That was pretty poke. Whatever. Press R. Move some soldiers around. Right click. Yeah, yeah, anyone can do it, right? <laughs> Another Baron. And CJ will claim a turret. But that is fourth Dragon, rather, not Baron. For SK Telecom. So now they have that five Dragon pressure as well, too. Still have Baron buff ticking away. Got some more time to use it. Should they decide to take some more inhibitors. Faker needed another blue buff, I guess. Delaying the push a little bit there. And Needs all the buffs, man. Running a little bit low on that Baron as a result. But yeah. Faker's job is just to shove the mid wave and then start to group on the bottom side of the map. All right, here comes the push. Bottom lane, Faker over the wall to help his team out. Hello. Sand Soldiers in your bases. And that should clear quite a bit. Ooh, Bang, wow, very low after that true shot barrage. But SKT not deterred. Bengi coming from the side, way deep in the base. They're going to ult. They're going to actually push CJ back a bit. No big team fight to speak of, but they're able to take that turret and go right onto the inhibitor again. Wow, oh. Faker bending it to bring Madlife in range. There's the Zonias. Didn't quite catch as many people as he wanted there. But SKT still should be able to get that inhibitor. That was nearly big team fight loss for CJ. I love the way SK Telecom played that because once Bang was chunk choked out, sure, you could send him back, you could wait for another minion wave, he's got a Blade of the Ruined King to actually heal up, but they wanted the inhibitor, they had their eyes on the actual objective, 
And what that meant was, when Bengi threatened, he wasn't ulting to engage right there. He was just ulting in Marnie's Righteous Glory simply to push them off the tower. They couldn't have fought then because Bang was so low, even though they have this big advantage. So they withdraw immediately afterwards, collapse on the turret, collapse on the inhibitor, take that objective safely, and CJ really doesn't have a way to counterplay that very meaningfully. So I, it's a very good shot calling from SK Telecom. They just look so poised. Yeah. yeah, they really do seem to be playing everything pretty flawlessly this game. And uh, potentially a slow, methodical end, but CJ, a team that relies on team fights in the middle eight and late game, so they're going to try something. You know CJ is going to go for some sort of apocalyptic team fight here at the end of it. But when? When are they going to get a chance? They're Shot not. Barrage. They're not, Joa. Spoiler. I hope they are. I think they're going to go for it right now. Uh, we'll see. Trick landing a couple spears, but that's about it. I mean, they just have to be worried about all these minion waves. What are they going to do right now? Super minions steadily flooding into their base in two lanes. Yeah, they have to try something here. They have to try something. Shy's about to go Meganar. This is it. He's going to come in, get condemned back immediately. Zonia's by Baker just to stay safe. Shy with no flash. He already used it to get out, and Mad Life very, very low. And now Marin getting in the back lines, making a mess of everything. And Faker takes out the turret. Bang takes out Marin and Shy. And SKT going to take this game a triple kill for Bang to end things out. Oh, Coco, very low. Nearly killed in Fountain by Faker. Faker really wants something in the Fountain here. I think he's going to settle with just an Nexus. He's going to go in. And oh, he gets him right at the end. Space manages to take down Faker, but an in Fountain kills a stylish way for SK Telecom to end that game. Well, <laughs> what can you say? I, I mean, I, I just see uh. right now, if you let Faker get that early tower, if you give him a matchup where he can put the pressure down, he has all the wards necessary to make those calls. Bengi provides great eyes, as we saw on the enemy jungler, so they could dive Coco early. The draft was very good to play the game in that manner. Get the Evelyn, deny the Rek'Sai, punish the rookie, wait till he walks out somewhere on the map, and then just dive the mid lane, shut down Coco. Without Coco to carry you, CJ doesn't have a whole lot left. So yeah. tough loss for CJ, but you have to draft differently against SK. If you want a chance to beat T1 right now, you need mid to taking down an early mid turret and then just having everybody pile onto the side lanes. Very true. It's a very good style, it's very effective. And there, it's, okay, so they're bad <laughs> Maokai. Okay. And Rumble. Okay, so they've banned, they've banned Marin's top two champions in terms of champions played. SKT sticking with the Kog'Maw ban here. They, it's been uh, pretty standard for them. They banned it in all four of their last four games now. And there's an Annie ban. It's been interesting for me. Obviously, Mad Life, very good Annie player, but it yeah. is a priority pick on red side for sure. This looks like an Alistar first pick. Uh, I think you're going to ban the Rise, and CJ will have a chance to do something like first pick the Alistar. There's the Rise ban. We'll see. A lot of other options, too. I mean, they could grab that Rek'Sai just to give Trick something comfortable in case Bengi plays the Evelyn again. We'll see. Honestly, I feel like maybe it's a little bit, a little bit better to make Trick comfortable this game. Uh, Gragas actually available as well. Yep, the Gragas, but we know that Trick is a feared Nidalee player. Again, he didn't do that much last game, but it was mostly his pathing and his location on the map that caused that issue. They're going to take the Rek'Sai, which was banned okay. in the last game, so that they can keep better track of Bengi. Having Rek'Sai would have made things a lot different for CJ. You know, the funny thing is Bengi wasn't originally a big Gragas player, but He's played it a few times, and his mechanics have been fantastic, so yep. of course he's just going to lock it in. Yep, of course he will. And they're going to take Gnar, too. So yep. basically, when it comes to Marin, if we look at his champion pool, uh, Rumble and Maokai are his two most played, but Gnar not too far behind. 23 games on this champion, 16 and 7 hmm. overall. And where does Shy go now? Of course, that's Shen uh, still up for Shy, but they banned two of Shy's main champions in Maokai and Rumble. 
I think SKT is going for the, the G name composition. It's going to be Galio Gangplank. It's got to be one more. Garen, yeah, there we go. Pretty sure that's what they're going for. It's also Braves, known. Maybe. It's also known as the standard Faker band composition: <laughs> Galio, Gangplank, and Garen. Yeah, it's it's pretty, pretty much the truth there. All right, Rom and uh, Coco will get his Azir. Coco is a pretty incredible Azir player. Please play Velkos Faker. Yes. Oh, that'd be so beautiful. That's what I really, really want to see. He's been playing it in solo queue. Hmm. So that is definitely an option. With the API itemization changes, this is a good time to actually test that out. Well, Velkos can do a lot. Velkos is so good with Leandris and Rylai's. Look at the team they're setting up, too. A lot of frontline tankiness, Bang kind of skirmishing around, picking people off. That seems like it would go very, very good with a giant laser burning a hole in the enemy yep. team. And you have a lot of disruption, too, with yep. the Gragas, two forms of primary initiation with the Gragas and the Alistair. So this is a very good comp for Velkos, for sure. I agree yeah. with you. Uh, CJ may be doing that thing that they do where they don't have a good form of primary engage to for Shen to ride into battle on. I I'm not a fan of this. They really like to use Coco's Azir with a Shen ult as a form of primary engage. I think it's risky. Uh, CJ is a team that can execute on it, though. But for mm. me, just it's not very reliable to to rest on that. I kind of like the Graves a little bit better here, just to blow up the back line or a Velkaz that would presumably be there. That would have that would have actually been a pretty good way to handle it, I think. Yeah, you, you could have had that, obviously. Uh, the Graves has been banned against space. Uh, that he likes to play it into the Sivir matchup, but going to take Sivir instead. So they will have some more speed to help out their engage. I think this is a safer pick. Yeah. So Shen coming in as expected for Shy. Certainly makes the Velkaz a, a bit riskier, but I think you I go think for it. it. You've still got you've still got it. that. Just play it. I think you could Come totally, on. I think you could totally play it. Come here. on, Faker. What are you afraid of? You play Master Yi, you play Aurelia. He could play Aurelia here too. That's true, but come well, on. Well there's not come enough on. magic damage in that case. That would come with a bigger risk. Velkaz. I agree. Velkaz. I don't think there's enough threat from CJ onto the back line, and there should be enough disengage for SKT that this is safe. I agree. Velkaz is the only answer. I was thinking about it. Come on, Faker. Come on, Faker. You can do it. You can play the Velkaz. Oh, Victor. Well, you really got a Victor, too, but come on. Don't you want to play the Velkaz? He's going to switch. Oh. Well, no Velkaz. He's a great Victor player, obviously. Still yeah. professionally undefeated on that champion, and it's his most played champion this season, but I am a bit bummed out. Me too. About the lack of Velkaz. I think this would be I'm, a, I've seen him play it in solo queue. I've watched some of his solo queue games on that champion, and I just want to see it. I'm just downright sad. I see it. I'm broken up a bit <laughs> by this not Velkaz pick. <laughs> The thing is, is is basically by picking the victor, SKT and Faker are just saying, you know what, we're just going to end you. That's it. Because Faker, when he gets ahead on victor, he just single-handedly carries the game from that moment on. Yep, he absolutely knows how to just push forward very safely, and it takes two to three people to get him off of a tower, and if you commit that much, then the split push from his allies really does work out very nicely. Mm -hmm. So it's another situation where we've seen Faker take over the game on this champion, and Victor has been extraordinary for him this season. There is no questioning that. Yeah, well, we will see if SKT can get the 2-0. Looking pretty likely, but uh, CJ playing a comp that they found certainly a lot of success with in the past. Will Trick feel a bit more comfortable on this Rek'Sai going up against Bengi's Gragas? That's another thing we hadn't talked a lot about, Bengi's Gragas. It's, uh, weirdly enough, this is where Bengi becomes a playmaking support. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's happened before, so we'll see if it happens here. CJ looking for the tied match. SKT looking for the 2-0. Let's get in the game. All right, here we go. CJ Antis versus SK Telecom. Welcome, perhaps for the last time tonight, to Summoner's Rift. It's been, it's been an exciting day. It certainly has been. And as we head into this last match, we can talk a little bit about Benki's Gragas, a champion that he, um, 
He looked quite weak on, actually, a couple months ago when he first kind of came into the meta. And ever since that point, though, Bengi looks like he's really worked on his Growlicus mechanics. We've seen some impressive flash body slam ganks and some yeah. nice confidence in his ability. And that has been a big turnaround from him. And while you, we used to say, okay, well, SKT's not going to be playing that Gragas, now they really have been able to utilize it very effectively. Mm. So taking that body slam, a level one to just hop over the wall. CJ was putting a, we're putting a little bit of pressure on him. Yep. CJ just being very annoying. Yep, they ward up the enemy jungle. This is risky to do against SK Telecom because if you do go for the early buff invade, uh, like we saw some teams do, trying to take away the buff in the enemy side of the jungle, then it has been punished by SKT with some nice level one fights previously, but they're not going to go for it this time. Instead, they are just going to see Alistair Wolf walking into the top lane, so they'll know they're going to get a top lane. Uh, yeah, they are going to get the top lane 2v2, CJ Entis. And Bang gonna try and he doesn't think that they're here. How much is he gonna commit to freezing this? He's gotta be careful here. Oh, yep. luckily for him, the Q does not hit. Yeah, He's just gonna walk off. Wolf walking into the jungle. So they're actually gonna get Chase Vane quite a ways away, but they do not actually get a whole lot. But this is gonna be nice, at least for a while, for CJ Entis, because they have Wolf on the run here. That's just really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the king of supports, remember? <laughs> Hit you don't with my you, chair. Don't you remember my Blitzcrank? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's like, Alistar's my champion. I'm famous for playing him. What are you? Trick's here now, though. What is this? This is a weird. This is the weirdest part of the game. Oh, uh, yeah. Start of the game, though. He had to take Paul to level one. He was afraid of Trick. Yep. So now they're going to move into the red side jungle actually because wow. uh, part of CJ's warning there was they knew that Gragas was starting on the blue side of SK Telecom's jungle so that means that with Mad Life already uh, zoning Wolf out right there and because they pushed the wave up against the vein oh so hello early. shy Oliver Marin luckily Marin gets a stun with Meganar he's tanky right now but that's still pretty dangerous Marin did right there because he's a yeah. level up on Shy. So to die in a 1v1 when you have level 3 and the enemy has only level 2 would be quite embarrassing for Marin. No kidding. I mean, that's actually horrendous because you have at least access to another one of your abilities at that point. Bizarre. All right, Bizarre, Faker, they're going in on him. They forced the flash right away. So CJ with some good early pressure across the board in game two. Yep. And the summoner heals. So both summoners down. Bengi just going to waltz through. Here we go. Push up the lane and oh. uh, just zoning him out right now. Just trying to push up. Mara needs some time to recall is what this is. Yeah. So he wants to make sure that there wasn't a gank possibly coming in. And it looks like they had vision on Rek'Sai Raptors, so. Yep. Well, Faker's going to have to play a little bit safe for the next few minutes here without that flash. Coco's going to get some good time to push in this lane, too. It's going to be really on SK Telecom to try to punish this. There he is. Well, they, punishing. apparently they have the tools to do it. Shy is doing well against Marin in the laning phase. Marin looks like he is going to go for a damage item first. We've seen him kind of prefer to go for the Hex Drinker or even the Black Cleaver on the Gnar, first and foremost. Yep. Now Trick trying to make a play here on Namar, and this could be really rough for him. No Mega Gnar right now. He's going to flash and hop out. Makes it. Had to burn that flash, though. Yeah, so Trick couldn't catch him with the Unburrow. Marin was afraid that if he just hopped, that there would be a follow-up flash from Trick. Right. So they get a summoner spell, keep Shy in the advantage down on that side of the map. So things going much better this game yeah. for with CJ. The, I like the early pink ward, though, just trying to keep their duo lanes safe. Bengi going to invade the jungle a little bit there, too. So you can see SK Telecom kind of adapting already. They're sort of just pulling back, playing it a little bit safer. And we'll see how it works out for them in the end, I guess. Yeah, I. Well, both compositions here, we talk about the end game, are going to scale well. I still like SK Telecoms because they have more methods of engagement. Yeah. Uh, between the Grog Assault and Wolf's ability to engage with a flash headbutt pull on Alistair, 
Meanwhile, CJ again, they keep picking these compositions where there's not a really obvious Shen ult target. And that means that Coco has to go in with the Emperor's Divide if you want to make a play onto their backline that's reliable. I mean, so it's just more finicky, it's less consistent. And so SKT kind of has a more natural ability to win some of these team fights. CJ can definitely pull it off, but it's harder to do. Clearly, CJ sees his ears, their primary engage, and okay. with the plays Coco's made, I mean, you really can't argue with that too much. They keep on running this comp. They keep yep. on doing the Azir Shen thing. And they win with it, too. Yeah, they, they do win with it. Will they win against SK Telecom, though? Trick looking for another gank, but Faker's playing it a little bit safer again with no flash. He really needs to be careful. I think Coco may be going in here. Yep, I was going to say, there's a flash engage. Faker trying to get back to his turn, but he's in a lot of trouble. Coco getting low, but Faker's going to get taken out. First blood going to Shy, who came down with the ult. It's like, this one's mine. I did all the work. I'm Shy and I'm helping. That's right. Well, Baran didn't have TP there. Double globals onto Shen. So Shy just going to head back to base. Not by up and head into lane with that teleport. So Marn actually will have a brief period of global advantage with the TP after both used simultaneously from Shy, but nice play, making a case against uh, the victor from Faker. Again, he is undefeated professionally on that champion, so. Yeah, it's not like we haven't seen him killed early in lane anyway in the past. Well, you know, that's really good focus though from CJ to get the summoners out and make a return play right as Shy hits six, but before Faker has his flash. Yeah, I really think that Trick's feeling a lot more comfortable on this Rek'Sai. I mean, it's a simpler champion to play as far as engaging, as far as team fighting. Yeah. So he should feel pretty good. And Faker farming about as well as can be expected after dying a little bit down in CS. Well, also just the matchup too. Azir yeah. is pretty punishing early for Victor. And sh you have to get so close in terms of Q range and even that shield from the power transfer doesn't help you after you oh. get a hit by a couple of auto attacks. Bengi just has to body slam out of the way. Trick and Madlife going on a mission together. Yeah, to this wars. is what we were going to wonder if we were going to see more of, is uh, Trick and uh, Madlife grouping up. Uh, Benki has to leave. He's going to yeah, get dove. He does. Yeah. Looks like he'll be OK for now. So if you see this, however, uh, if CJ's going to do this, you have to go onto the dragon. I mean, just go for the dragon right now, because otherwise they're just getting a free tower. And this is actually a mistake by CJ, really. Well, not a mistake, it's a choice, let's say, that they want to go for the turret instead of the dragon after SKT has already swapped it oh, to the bottom action side. Oh, multiple lanes. Faker, they're going to go in onto Coco. Faker should be able to grab this one. No, Bengi takes it away with the Q. It's like kill steal central here. Okay. Meanwhile, SK Telecom takes the bottom turret. So bottom turret was already low. Now Bengi going to start contesting the red buff. Recalls coming in from Bang and Wolf, so happy apparently just to trade turrets instead of going on to the dragon immediately. Probably could have gotten it there. Shy did not have his ultimate to affect that battle, and everyone is up on the top side. Meanwhile, SKT, I think, overcommitting to this red buff right now. Well, they, it seems like they just could be getting Dragon. I suppose this does give Faker plenty of time to push down the mid lane turret, and in that in that way, kind of helps him catch up quite a bit against Coco. Marin could be coming over the wall here, and Faker could come up. Wolf may be in a little bit of trouble here. Bengi needs to do something. He doesn't have his ult. He's not even level six, though. Wolf has to flash. I mean, if Faker's not going to come, this is the most ridiculous red buff battle. The fact that Bengi's not level 6 right now is really hurting. Maybe he will be after red. Faker gets some nice damage in onto Trick there. Yeah, just not a lot of damage. Chaos Storm is still down, so he doesn't want to make too aggressive of a move, but right. does, I guess, eventually secure his team's red buff, even though there's still some wards in there from CJ. They are forced to fall back. Now, if Bengi had had six, maybe they could do something else. He just got it right now. Faker's been able to, uh, you know, keep the CS lead for Coco fairly, fairly even. Keeps it from growing it anyway. Yep, Bengi's tied him up in terms of assists. So, that advantage not too great in the mid lane, but still present for sure. Yeah. Blue buff will be taken, and still no one actually grabbing that red buff. Bengi just decided to do Raptors and head over to the other side of the map. Bengi does have the enemy blue buff here. Well, we'll 
CFSK Telecom wants to go for a move towards the Dragon pretty soon here. They've got the vision now. And Bengi looking to go up. There it goes in. Bang takes a lot of damage, though. He's in trouble. Nice engage from Wolf. There's the exhaust on space. Should at least allow Bang to disengage. Shy, of course, coming down in space. Gets the kill onto Bengi. Now chasing Wolf. Bang doing the damage he can, but it's just too early for this Vayne to really carry. Marin, meanwhile, getting some damage done on the top turret, but a nice gank for CJ, and they might be able to claim the bottom turret in return. Very disrespectful play from SK Telecom. You yeah. know Shy has two globals at the top side, that he's going to be able to shield a target. They were able to hold Bang's damage at bay for long enough, thanks to the exhaust. So in the end, they lose Bengi, and they just trade one for one in terms of towers. And not only that, but now CJ has a lot of people down in bottom lane to take the Dragon if they want to. Yeah, and they will go for it. Coco coming over, so is Vager. Looks like SK Telecom may want to fight this. They've got their ults. They're going to jump onto Wolf. Wolf tries to come back in. Doesn't quite make it. A lot of knockups, and that's going to be another kill for Space. Marin chunked out before he goes Meganar, and SK Telecom in disarray here. Vaker pushed back by Coco. He's always going to flash over. There's a Chaos Storm. Mad Life coming over the wall, too. Meanwhile, a double kill for Coco. Vaker manages to pick one up onto Coco then. Bang still alive, still doing damage, and here comes Bengi. No ult for him, but he is back with full health. Now, they did delay the Dragon Throttle. This Bengi still has, like you said, a lot of health. So does Shy. So Shy just going to zone him out. Faker has to go back to the mid lane, has that blue buff, can keep pushing forward. Can and take the maybe they too. can get a mid turret. That would be absolutely huge out of that situation. Now, Marin TP'd in. Marin has a black oh, Got to get out of there. I do not like most of the time when Marin commits to these early skirmishes with the Black Cleaver because he just doesn't have the tankiness. Yeah. It's great if you want to split push and punish the Shen, but when you try and come into a, an early combat with it, especially when you start the fight in Mini Nar, when you don't have a lot of that extra tankiness by having the Mega Nar, it just doesn't do that much work. So. Martin's been, Martin's been on this Black Cleaver kick recently with Gnar. I don't know how much I like it. I think it's kind of one-dimensional and punishable by early grouping from the enemy team. Well, it nearly was. SK Telecom very lucky that CJ wasn't able to take the Dragon right off of that. Marin checking for the blue buff. He's going to see it. I mean, we see the upside of it, right? Which is that he has a 30 CS advantage. Yeah. There, you can harass the Shen nearly endlessly. Shy has his Sunfire Cape now, so that will be helpful for him, but it's still, you can't really stay in range to trade with the Nar because he's able to kite you so efficiently. And no teleport for Marin, but Shy does have his ult, so that should mean CJ can take this dragon. Yeah, Faker has his Chaos Storm back up. Wolf here with the Unbreakable Will. But do you go in, though? I don't, no, think, it's, you can't. I don't think it's safe enough. So CJ playing around the Shen ults nicely. They're not able to get it engaged because SK Telecom is unwilling to commit to a fight. But besides that, they get what they came for. Marn going to try and deny a blue buff in the interim. Now it looks like they're going to lose their mid lane turret, though. Oh, maybe not. Not quite yet. Um, Shy got it. Wow, he did. <laughs> That's impressive. Shy Shen is very good. Nothing to do with taking blue buffs, but certainly knows how to play it. Well, we've seen, I mean, he's been playing it for years. Oh, yeah. And years and years. So that is hardly shocking, and we've seen those bands against his Shen start to pop up. Oh, Bengi finds Trick. Over the wall onto Trick, yeah, just blind Wolf body slam coming in. Faker, oh, they knock Coco right into him. Coco tries to get away. Chaos Storm, Coco tries to go in, knocks Faker back towards the turret. Wolf is there, though, to protect him. They're going to get the kill on Coco, but not till Shy comes in. That's going to be a kill for Trick. Wolf on his own a little bit. Bang. Here comes Bang. Pops that ultimate. Can he do work here? Mad Life coming in. Space entering the fray. SKT in big trouble. CJ's got this fight for sure. Marin still not tanky enough. Gets Meganar just in time and backs away, but they're going to lose a mid lane turret too. That's right. So they go in again, knowing that the Shy ultimate is there. They think they can burst him down fast enough before Shy can actually respond. But Coco oh just barely manages to live through that, and that's going to be two turrets as CJ jumps out to about a 3K gold lead. Wow, nice, nice contra to Bengi in space, gets another one. Uh, Shy just really doing work on the Shen. Wolf, what are you doing there, buddy? Can you, can't, you can't save this turret, man. Yeah. All right, wow, CJ jumping out to a pretty big lead now. 4K at 15 minutes, two to four in turrets, and they've got the first dragon, too. SK Telecom's got to be sweating a bit. Yeah, 
they do. I mean, this is a big... So let's take a look at this play again, because Faker wants to just burst Coco down, and they think they can do it. But Coco gets a flash during the headbutt animation, which is why he went at a very weird angle there. And then, look at that. He dies just before Shen comes through. That could have easily been a fight that really went SK Telecom's yes, way as absolutely. well. Yes, absolutely. Very close one, but it, because it, they lost it. It was also a very weird interaction between Flash and Headbutt. Yeah. But CJ followed up well. Shy got there in the nick of time. Mm -hmm. Fast fingers on that Stand United. True enough. And CJ just trying to muscle their way into the jungle now to get some wards down. Maybe catch people. And this is where CJ is strongest, the mid game with the team fight. Indeed. So, with this gold lead, how well can they transition this into more of an advantage? There's still that mid lane turret up, so CJ's turning last game on its head. They get the two towers down in the mid lane, and uh, Faker just wants to push up. He needs control over mid. Marin has the split pushing advantage in the 1v1. They need to abuse this for as long as they look at that. That's just so annoying. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of damage. Yes, it is. Wow. Yep, and there's percent health damage right there for Shy. That's why he keeps getting chunked so hard. And there's no static shift done yet for Bang. So there, CJ should be trying to target Bang's lane here as long as they can hold Faker just pushing in mid, trying to get that tier one down. I feel like Bang's got to be sitting on a decent amount of money at this point, but. We'll see what he gets when he goes back. Faker certainly not having any CS issues compared to Coco this game. No, he's not. He's actually only going to get the Berserker Grease when he goes wow. back, so not exactly ideal. No, not at all. He's down in CS, though, and especially if we compare him to Space, who well, has four all kills. of these that's kills. True. Yeah, that's a good point. Marin going for the Merc Treads and now only now starting to get a Ruby Crystal. So going for some tank items, second no doubt. Dragon up in a minute 35. Pretty sure that SKT is going to have to let this one go. Yeah, they really can't fight right now. Well, they just don't have enough ways to clear minion waves fast either. So they're pretty much never going to get that wave past the river in the bottom side. And that means CJ will always have an advantage when it comes to control on the bottom side of the map, at least for the next few minutes. And I think it will take out a pink ward. Is there a play to be made here? Marin has his TP back up, but so is Stan United. And just wants to get back to, or Trick just wants to get back to where the dragon's going to be in a few. Just a minute now. SKT, if they want to win a team fight right now, they really need CJ to make a mistake, like group up in a choke point or something like that. I just feel like Bang just is not that strong right now, too. No, he's not. Definitely nowhere near as strong as this Sivir, even though he's playing that Bane. There's just not enough itemization or time yet to get Bane into a good state. Yeah. Well, Marin's still pushing the top lane, slowly chipping away at that turret. Shy doing everything he can to hold it, but all right, CJ gonna come much. in as Marin uses the Mega Nar. He's gonna actually just clear out a ward right now, try and take the blue buff in that Mega Nar form. Jumping around. I don't think he's gonna have time. Yeah, he's gotta get out of there. Or maybe not. Oh boy, engage on the wolf. He got caught. He's in a lot of trouble. Uses the ultimate, uses the flash, flash from CJ, and they should, even with that tankiness, be able to take him out. Yet another kill for space. Wow. Yeah, I think you don't even walk in there. CJ's done an excellent job of warding around the dragon. You know you're probably not going to take it. Best case scenario, you can try and trade for some kills here onto the top side of the map. Marn gonna go Megadar again very soon. Yeah, but really, really low though. Oh man, he took a lot of turret damage. Oh. Even with Meganar, there's the Q on the Shy. I don't know if you can really fight this. He gets a stun. Nope, Thank he's right there. They're gonna take the turret. All right, Faker comes in. 
So they're trying to get something for the Dragon, but they don't quite get it. Here comes Coco. Faker needs to be careful here. Oh, Q on to Coco as he comes over the wall. Shen coming in as well. Marin on the run already. Goodbye, Faker. Gets really low. There's another kill for Shy. Bengi has to ult himself. Marin with the flash. And SKT. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> that was the easiest kill in the world. Decapitated. And this is going to be a Baron for CJ. Yeah. If we look at their response, Bad Life was already there and waiting for the tier two engage. They had the, the ult from Shy up one more time. So they felt confident with Coco just wandering into that lane. Bengi looking for a steal right here. Bang is really the last thing that could actually stop this from going Pretty down. Much. Bengi stunned. Can't do anything about it. He's going to get taken out. Another kill for Shy. Bang trying to make something happen over the wall. Shy getting a bit low. There's a kill for Wolf, actually. Takes that one away from Bang. I don't know exactly if you would want to taunt the Nane when you have no HP. It's not like you yeah. want her to auto attack you at that point. A bit awkward from Shy, but. Shy did, apparently. It's okay. I guess he didn't want to split push with Baron buff anyway. Who huh. wants that, Doa? No, no Shen wants that. That is totally not what Shen does at all. Yeah, I, I mean, Bad Life did a good job holding him around, but look at Coco's play with the Shen shield on him. He's just impenetrable, even with the burst damage from Victor Shy. Haha, uh, -ha, I've escaped. Flash. I feel safe. Uh, no. <laughs> well, and Banks still does not have that static shift. And Wolf gets caught again. He's been caught a few times already. CJ has had great wards. They've been using him well. Wolf takes a lot of damage and just got that ult back again. I don't think he wants to use it now. No, doesn't have to in the end, but uh, there just hasn't been a lot of oh, warding. Uh-oh. Oh, that's a lot of damage. And Mad Life slows him with the Q. Yet another kill for space. Mad Life's Braum has been so good this game. Yes, it He's has. He's been on point in terms of where he needs to be on the map. He's secured so many kills for them by hitting the Winter's Bite. Oh, and I don't think SK Telecom can come back. Nope, looks like it will be Faker's first competitive loss on Victor. Yeah. Barring some sort of crazy upset team fight here in the later stages of the game. Could have seen Valkaz. Could have seen Valkaz. Would have protected his Victor record. <laughs> Yeah, there's just not much SKT can do right now. Hard to ever count him out like we talked about before, but this is a little bit too big of a lead, even for SK Telecom. I don't know. They came back against Jin Air when they had, they lost Baron and had an inhibitor down. Yeah, but <laughs> the likelihood of that happening against CJ I feel is much less with the way uh, that CJ fights in the late game. That's true, but also there's this big, problem where you have Faker on Victor and he's got so much burst damage in a late game vein too. You, you get the right pick and maybe you can do it. Still maybe. obviously very unlikely. Maybe. Oh, that won't help. Taking out the cannon minion. Marin in the back, but that is not where you want to be. No flank to be spoken of there. And SKT loses their top laner. Shy all over Sivir. Here Beautiful comes top. Shy. Great taunt. Yeah, knockups come in for SKT, but no follow-up really. Chaos Storm Barely tickling Coco at this point. They got space though, and they, they really, really kind of needed him for these sieges to take out an inhibitor. Oh. Whoa, nice. Bye, Coco Faker. bending in you right mean, onto Faker. There's a double kill for Coco not, now. It's not bending, it's curve it like Coco. Curve it like Coco, all right, that's there what, we go. That's what I've that's learned. That's what it is from now on. <laughs> curve it like Coco. Who, in my mind, is the best Azir player we have here in Korea. I think it's hard to disagree with that after this game. And CJ looks like they're ready to try to end it right now. A little bit a little bit too much yet to do that. Bengi, no ult. Just going to go for the slow. Marin trying to harass as well, and Bang not able to get close enough. So inhibitor down, massive gold deficit. This is where they found themselves versus Jin Air, and they had that very sudden reversal. Now, this game, they don't have the Tristana to blow through turrets quite so easily. I mean, Vayne can take down turrets relatively quickly, too, but not, not Tristana quick. Well, yeah, that's not, it's not even close, really. And now, maybe they can get a dragon here. <laughs> the optimism. I think CJ played well this game. They played well in the early game to get their advantages. Tricks jungling. Working out really well, playing around Faker, trying to camp him, getting his summoners, getting his first blood, and shutting down the victor. So it's been working out. Rek'Sai ban in game one from SKT. Looks like it was justified. 
I would say so. Trick has been doing a lot, lot better on this champion. Just been much freer to move around the map. And all those great mechanical plays we talked about with Bengi's Gragas just have not been happening. No, and they haven't been. Trick certainly getting a good, a good head on his shoulder. Oh, Bang oh, actually bang. dodging that. Dodges oh, the oh, ult. He can kill Coco. Trick there to try to save him. Shy coming in. No, he can't. Oh. Uh, Shy just ulting for a moment. Doesn't even really need to continue it. Yeah, has the barrier there, so just not enough damage from Bang. 12 seconds until Dragon, though, and everyone committed on top for CJ, so maybe there's a possibility they could do this, but their smite is all the way in the top side jungle. So scratch that. Yep. Yeah. Marin, again, this Black Cleaver build has not been, not been good. Not enough tankiness. And CJ should take an easy third dragon at this point. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just not a fan of this. I mean, I know SK, how they like to play. They, they're a very skirmish-focused team in general. Uh, they're not as much of a let's group as five and fight. They like to get their advantages through one-on-ones and 2v2s. They like to have Bengi and Wolf there to provide wards so that Marin and Faker can out-duel their opponents and get edges that way. But... If, you, if the other team starts to get ahead and they can force you to fight, or you make a decision to fight, just having that Black Cleaver can be pretty detrimental. Oh, Faker in a lot of trouble, pushed back by the Empress Divide again, but Coco blown up, Shenault coming in, Faker has to get away. There he is, can he get over the wall, uses that flash to make it, CJ committing a lot to that one. Faker having to burn both summoners himself to get out, Bengi flashing as well. We do see a lot of burst, whoa, Bang, Bang. coming in. Saving the day with that kill onto Coco. And now SKT turning around somehow, some way. Shy there for a taunt though, and Trick over the side. Wolf gonna push him away. Bengi in a lot of trouble. Marin can't really do much of anything, and there's another kill for space. Yeah, Marin and Wolf in a lot of trouble. Here comes Faker. I mean, SKT overextending right there. They shouldn't have used the explosive cast because they yep. didn't have Faker or Bang. They had no damage. And space was easily able to spell shield that and then turn the tables. Oops. Oh, Wolf. Trying to get a ward down, but not a good time to do that. Gonna pop his ultimate, gonna flash, and it looks like he'll escape for now. Faker needs to run for his life as well. Oh, bang. Look at this guy. Well, you know, he's got no armor penetration right now, and their Shy has both Sunfire and Randuins. Not sure he's gonna be able to do any damage to this Shen. Well, SKT, they know there's a Baron going down. Can they do anything about it? Doesn't look like they even want to try. That's gonna be a second Baron going to CJ. Yep, just giving it up. Not going to commit at all. Not sure how good of an idea that is. Seems likely that their best shot was to get some damage down while they were doing the Baron instead of just waiting for it to complete. SK Telecom now has to worry about their base here. I think SKT saying, all right, you know what? We just need to try to hold on. We just need to try to wait until the, the very, very late game. And at least we can be theoretically on even footing if it comes to a team fight. Yep, this is why people ban Shen against Shy. Yep. Those double globals are just ridiculously difficult to play around, especially when you're on point in terms of your comms and your uh, map sense like China, Shy is. Very true. Oh, Bank just trying to farm as much as he can, but he's still way behind. Banky. And there goes the tier two. Starting the siege right now. Uh, now, at least for SKT, the wave is pushed up very far at the bottom side, so they have some time to work with. And it's difficult for CJ to dive. They do not have a good composition when it comes to siege. It's okay, uh, obviously, with the Azir, but the Sivir, pretty low in terms of range for auto attacking that turret, and they don't have a way to dive, really. Right. So, waiting, playing patiently here around the Azir turret, going for the 4 1 split, definitely the better choice. Uh, the inhibitor's back up for SKT now, so that's going to be the last wave of super minions that are available for some time. Baron, 50% down for CJ. Wow, Faker just getting chunked so bad. Coco's huge. Yeah, he is. Faker's got the burst, but he can't stand up to poke like that. 
That turret could go down at any moment here. It's not going to take long. And a huge wave in bot lane that somebody's going to need to deal with as well. That inhibitor is in some pretty serious danger. There goes the Azir turret, and here they go. Pulling in. And they might get two inhibitors here. The middle one getting a bit low. SKT zoning well enough for the moment. If they're going to engage, it's going to have to be now. They're just going to let the inhibitor go. Yep, they are. So are they going to be able to save inhibitor number two? Marin's Meganar has almost run out. He's going to try and go for this. Nope. Yeah, nothing. He gets Space's Flash, though. True. CJ moving forward. They really want this. They've got the zoning tools. They've still got Wolf for the engage. Bengi tries to make something happen. CJ going for it now, but just more zoning with those sand soldiers. Yeah, smart. And they're going to get the other inhibitor. Just yeah. use the Sivir ult to scare them off the inhibitor. Take down the inhibitor. Don't give SKT a chance to come back in this game. Makes sense. And just enough Baron to get that empowered recall. Always feels good when you get that inhibitor. Oh, yeah. Then you get back to base, and then at that moment the Baron falls off. Uh, yep. I did. I did well on this <laughs> Baron. Nailed timing. it. Perfect timing. Made the most of that Baron. And then there's a perfect amount of time for you as Sivir to go get red buff, and then head right to the dragon as it spawns for number four. Wow. Perfect. It's working out very well. Well, Bang's still lacking in the item department. More than a core item behind Space, but Space has just had a massive game. 8-1-3. and three. Crazy. I think Shy is the real hero here. <laughs> yeah, dude, his his taunts have helped Space get many a kill. And he's 5-1-6, and six, so he's had a, a great game as well. So here we go, moving up. Last remaining inhibitor in the sights. Of uh, CJ, they don't even want the dragon. You know, as we see this turret get lower and lower, too, Coco has had so many nice engages. Marin trying to come from behind <laughs> with the flank. No, he's just running away. Where's the rest of SKT? Where they go? Marin on the run, gets back to his team, still gets taken apart. Coco a bit low, they're gonna try to go in. Wolf gets into the back lines a little bit, but where's the engage from SKT? Wolf still alive for now. Coco with a big Empress Divide, knocks Bang right into the enemy team, and Shy comes in with the ultimate as well. There goes Faker. Coco with another kill, and CJ with a very convincing team fight to end this one by Marin. Wow. Double kill for Coco at the end of it all. And what can you say? They played this game really, really well. Coco. Shy, the heroes of this one, and looks like we're going to a game three. And you could really tell that SKT was uncomfortable in having to play against the Shen. Yeah. Uh, they were not playing well or respectfully around the double global threat from Shen, and this is a team, CJ. There aren't a lot of teams that play Shen top in Korea right now. CJ is by far the most dangerous on that champion. Shy really did a lot of work. He got he was just there every single time, bailing his team out when SKT was trying to skirmish. So I think you just ban the Shen if you're SK Telecom and move on with your life. Make sure that they can't get double globals on you again. Now that said, remember that Twisted Fate is also very good for CJ. The Coco is Ventus and SK Telecom. He had same a same sides. He had a Morgana game. And it will be the same ban, so Maokai and Rumble already through. Shen will be the ban, of course, from SKT. So modifying yeah. their draft just a little bit. Do they want to let the Rise through? Uh, Marin hasn't played a lot of Rise professionally, especially compared to Shy. It's never really been a pick for Marin. They also have to think, too, about uh, Trick as well. Do they want to risk giving him the Rek'Sai? I mean, just making Trick comfortable is dangerous, you know, because it lets, it just, it just takes away so much SK Telecom can do, you know? Wow, so Gragas actually banned here, rises up. Now, we haven't seen CJ play, well, Shy, I should say, play Rise in quite some time. Of course, one of the Rise top legends alongside Flame. Yeah. I mean, if you think about the champs Shy was really known for back in the, back in the day, it was Rise, Jackson, Shen. I don't understand this Gragas ban. So here's what I think. They leave up Rise, 
they ban the Gragas and they take the Rek'Sai. So they're forcing yeah, CJ to choose between Ryze and Rek'Sai right now. So this is their plan for how to deal with Trick and maybe abuse him in the jungle just a little bit. Yeah, do you maybe go for uh, Rek'Sai Alistar, perhaps, in the second round if they lock in this Ryze? Yep, Rek'Sai Alistar would be very strong. Of course, Alistar can break out of the Rune Prison. No Rune Prison can contain the Minotaur. True enough. Maybe, uh, maybe Rek'Sai Azir, actually. There's a Rek'Sai right away. Yes, the Rek'Sai is no surprise. You ban the Gragas, you give away the Rise. You expect this draft to occur. And now, where is Marin going here? Ah, the Corky, too. They could take. So they're going to go back to a comfort pick for Bang. Yeah. Space will be comfortable on Sivir, I would imagine. They're going to take the Corky. OK. A lot of support picks open. Well, all of the support picks Here, open yet, so no need to grab one of those. Here's the scary yeah. part, is that they can play the Nidalee again right now if you're CJ, and Rune Prison into Nidalee Spear is incredibly difficult to escape from. There's so much damage from a rise Nidalee combination yeah. that Bard is going to have to be extremely careful about how he approaches this if they go for the Nidalee. I, I think absolutely you take the Azir. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that SKT and didn't take that. You take the Braum, too. Oh. I think you take the Brog Kog'Maw. here instead of the Kog'Maw. So Kog'Maw goes through. It's the first time in the last five games now that Kog'Maw has remained unbanned or has been unbanned for SK Telecom. And remember, they lost to KT when KT played Kog'Maw. Yep, very true. Certainly was something they seemed to struggle against. And they should have predicted the Kog'Maw here uh, with the Corky pick. So I think what SKT is doing is they're trying to look for a lane swap. Now, again, so by taking the Corky, they get the Kog'Maw out, and they want CJ to really commit to standard lanes. And SKT just thinks, hey, we're going to lane swap out of this. Faker on Twisted Fate. Never really wow. a big Faker champion. So this is a bit interesting. I'm actually just going to check his record right now. Yeah. Because uh, we think about great Korean mid Twisted Fates, uh, we typically think about Dade and yep. not Faker. Mm, so what is CJ going to grab for their last two? They need a jungler. They need a support. I think it's going to be the Nidalee Braum. Yeah, Twisted Fate. Faker is 6-1 and one all time on TF. So definitely a very positive record, but only seven games ever on the champion. He's played many, many more champions more times than he has this TF. Well, it's been a long time, too, and, and still not willing to go for that Velkaz. I think, well, I think what they're doing here is they're just trying to flip the tables. They're saying, okay, okay, CJ Entis, last game you had two globals. This, this game, we're going to have it. Faker wants the ghost in this game. We've seen a lot of... Um, differences between players and how they go after this TF. Sometimes we see the teleport, uh, sometimes we see the ignite. This time it is going to be the ghost. Wow. And now a new new, one of the first we've seen in some time, and the Braum hmm. get through. Mad Lives are doing great on Braum recently. And what do you think about the new new though? That's, I mean, I okay. guess it depends on how Trick can play him, but. Here's the problem. Mundo. So, oh, Mundo. Yeah. Okay, Mundo was banned against Marin recently. I mean, and Mundo is good against a heavily AP team, like we see even Kog'Maw having a lot on there. So there's a, there's a chance Mundo could just wade right into the team. Well, plus we'll be able to regenerate off of some of this trading that Chai is going to be able to do. Yeah. Uh, limit some of the crowd control too in a 1v1 in the top side. So interesting composition from CJ Antis, but it, this, is, this is another problem. So last game at least, they had a Sivir, and they had a Shen to protect Coco's Azir when he went in. CJ running with no primary engage this time. None. Zip, zero, zilch. And very little protection, too, for anybody. Well, they have a, they have a, I don't know, they can kite pretty well here. They've got a lot of snares. They have the, the absolute zero. They have the Glacial Fisher, so they'll be able to kite. And they're going to be high damage, but CJ... They need to get in front of an objective first. It's another one yeah. of those compositions where you have to be a dragon before the enemy team because if you're trying to get onto them, the other team has a very easy time kiting you out. SK Telecom, they've got Faker, they've got Wolf to get into your back line. So CJ kind of going without, with a composition that doesn't have a reliable way to fight SK Telecom. Bit risky. 
if SK t catches you, they will kill you. Yes. That's just how it is. And so, SKT fighting to keep that unbroken match win record alive. Can CJ derail it? Let's get in the game and find out. All right. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. SK Telecom versus CJ in one of the loudest fan cheers I think I've heard in this studio in a long time. Yeah, we're CJ fans. We're packed tonight, of course, both of these teams, some of the most popular in Korea, so a lot of dedicated fans here this evening to oh, yeah. cheer on these teams and what has become a very close series. Yeah. You know, I even though KT got that convincing win in game one, I'm more afraid for SK Telecom in this match than I was for the other one. Well, I think that Trick is, its he looks like he's a pretty solid jungler, even as a rookie. Uh, he's been doing some, he did some nice stuff in the last game. And when we talk about CJ, they already have a lot of synergy as a team. They're old veterans. Yeah. Uh, KT made a lot of roster changes. This Faker's year, much better than Nagne. That yes. was a big factor there. Coco is definitely much more of a threat than Nagne is yeah. in the mid lane. I'm excited to see Shy's rise for the first time in a while. And yeah, we now all we need him to do is pick up the Jacks. <laughs> the Jacks is back. If we look at Shy's all time rise record, he's 5 and 1 all time. It was banned so many times against him, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, Shy is a guy that's been playing League of Legends for basically since he could get his hands on it for the first time. He was one of those guys that was playing on the NA server before Korea had one, way back in the very early days of the Korean scene. I don't think that's true. Really? Um, he was only I thought playing he went that about. Far back. I think it was only playing for about. He was only playing for six months before the season two World Championship, so oh. the Korean server would have been available by that time. Oh, I guess I'm totally wrong then. <laughs> I thought he was older school than that. Nope. Yeah, it's actually pretty amazing that he managed to make the world finals after such a small amount of time playing. Well, the more you know. Well, in this matchup here, uh, we do expect Cogmod to take a pretty healthy advantage thanks to the range and the poke. So we'll see how well space can do here. Uh, this is one of the main issues that playing Corky has these days, and Corky teams like SK Telecom are facing. Faker actually just gonna go up and gold card Coco. Oh, why not? Ooh, well, that's why not. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't doesn't have a defensive summoner here. Coco does have cleanse in case he needs it. And going for the ring first instead of the flask, so taking the worst end of that trade for sure. Yep, able to uh, stay in lane anyway for now. Bang and Wolf just pushing up this bot lane. And I, I really wonder what sort of impact Trick is going to have this game. Because he's certainly not going to have the same sort of pressure that uh, he did on Rek'Sai. Bengi coming in. Who gets Rift Scuttler? Bengi no just one. pushing him away. Bengi. SKT gets it. While well, Wolf was there, have yep. to be worried about Faker with the Ghost getting to you very quickly in the river. So smart of Trick just to back off in that situation. No need to overcommit, but this means that SK Telecom, they've got a lot of wards here, and what's going to happen, too, when Trick doesn't have the same ability to gank that he had the last time? Remember how they got ahead was a lot of good ganks from Trick, blowing Faker's summoner spells, and then forcing him back. Right. Or getting that first blood, and Nunu just, Nunu is here, just not going to have that same effect, really. Although they are pinging him right now, they're going to try. He's low, Ghost Faker will get him out. Faker is really low. Yeah, Ghost will get him out. That ward taken by the Raptor buff. Faker has to recall. Yep, so just some counter jungle for Trick. And Faker gonna lose some minions on this turret, but has a chance to get a second Doran's ring here. Not actually going for an upgraded boot. As once. Regular boot. Regular boot. Just a plain old boot. I don't see a second one, so it's just boot. Nope, just gonna hop on one foot down the lane. It's not boots of speed, it's boot of speed. Boot of speed. There is definitely maybe, not a second boot. Maybe the two boots are just right next to each other and you just can't see one because it's behind the other. 
Maybe you can see a little bit of it. Well, Baron <laughs> going to get quote unquote ganked. <laughs> oh no, a fearsome gank. <laughs> oh, a trick, getting fearsomely low, Marin. They're trying to make them commit to this. Uh, Benki's oh here. Oh boy, Marin really, really low. Needs to be careful. First blood taken by Shy anyway. Benki on the run. Whoops. Yeah, and Marin wasn't six right there to regen. Giving Shy the early kill is disastrous. Miscommunication because they didn't have Brexi there in time. It was a good idea. It's just it was misplayed by SK Telecom. Wow, and that's going to burn the teleport for Marin as well too. So. Shy with his teleport coming up soon is going to have a pretty decent TP advantage window for CJ for a little while. Yeah, and Marin, oh, we didn't even mention this. He's playing Smite Top. Oh, Maokai. wow, you're I right. I actually did not even realize yeah, that until window. right now. Which I was thinking about, well, well, why didn't he flash right there? But there was the answer. Uh, and that means that he may... I'll be curious to see what exactly he's doing here. Obviously going to be going for the Cinder Hulk eventually. Now, we haven't seen much of this recently, and the Skirmisher Saber's nerfs make this an even more interesting matchup because he's going to be able to significantly cut down Rise's damage, but not anywhere near the degree that he used to. Yeah. Huh. Some really interesting picks on both sides this game the Nunu and the Mundo, but he is able to actually get in and take a bit of jungle. And I suppose it's a it's an interesting response to the Nunu, right? Because the yeah. Nunu wants to be in your jungle taking your camps. And look, here we have Marin, a little bit down in lane, but or not even down in lane, down a kill, but able to steal multiple camps from Trick. Yeah, absolutely. And with that Mundo ultimate too, you could just go in there, take some camps, get some vision, of course, using that smite to actually Especially if you're on the red side and you're invading uh, blue side's blue jungle. Yeah. You can get the vision down with the wolf spirit. Here we go. Oh, Faker coming down. 3v3. Space already a little bit low. Gets knocked up. There they go into him. Exhaust use. Can they finish him off? Faker trying. There's one last auto. And he does it. Faker gets out uh -oh. just fine. And nice knockback from Wolf. Will it say Faker? Looks like it will. Bang on the run. Shy catches him with the rune prison. Bang. Doesn't look like he's gonna get to escape out of this one. Another kill for Shine, that's really dangerous. Faker caught by Coco now, flashed over the wall, but here comes the blue buff trick, comes in as well too, and Coco barely gets him. The ghost keeps Faker alive, which is very ironic to say now that I think about it, but it worked. If Bang had not used Valk, he used Valk unnecessarily under that turret because Faker had a last auto attack that actually killed Space. Yeah. That would have been a very different situation. Instead, they give Shy's Rise another kill. Now, of course, people will start to panic about this. What, what happens with this Rise keeps getting kills, he becomes very scary in the late game. But when we think about how CJ has to fight in the late game, how is CJ ever going to engage onto SK Telecom? They don't really have a good way to do that. Yeah. And so he can be kited out with some efficiency by SKT. Not to so, mention, theoretically, this Mundo should be able to tangle with him for a while in the team fight, at least. Yeah, and SKT is going to respond here with a Dragon. They were able to get back into lane slightly faster. And they also took away the blue buff from Azir. So even though they traded one for one, objectives definitely go over to SKT. They played the rest of them. Oh, Ooh, that was close. Okay. <laughs> Risky. Uh, it worked. It, it, it did work. Uh, Faker gets a kill, gets his Boots of Lucidity. But again, has to use both summoners on that gank. But still, Boot of Lucidity. more Boots of Lucidity. More taken on the map by SKT. So. Yeah. CJ turned it around nicely. They're, they're hoping that all this money is just going to increase the speed of Rise's scaling. Well, I'm surprised at just how much Marn has been able to steal away from Trick this game. He's really kind of making that top jungle on the CJ side his own. And then making it back to lane, he really hasn't gotten down in CS at all, and some of his CS has been more valuable. Yep, well, Trick's not going to make Got to be oh. careful there. Okay. Coco coming over, Faker playing a little bit unsafely. Yep, Faker in a lot of trouble. Rek'Sai trying to come in, but it's going to be too late. Faker really needs to be a bit more careful. Well, uh, he, I mean, the chilling smite onto the Nunu, combined with that snowball, I mean, those those slows may not stack any longer, but you can chain them together for some significant downtime. And when you yeah. have no summoners, maybe you don't make a play like that. Maybe you don't. So Faker giving up kind of a silly kill. Luckily for him, it goes on to Trick. 
If that had gone on to Coco, that would have been a little bit more nerve-wracking for SK Telecom. All right, home guard done. So Fager just wants to get back into lane, push the wave as frequently as possible. Coco will not be going for an early home guard himself. So he's trying to open it up in terms of the wave clear so that he can actually use his destiny yeah. where he will be going. Oh, we and he's going to use it right away. They're going to try to kill a kill onto Shy and top. Nice knock up there. Shy's not making it out of this one. And there's a kill for Bengi. And so if they can start to punish this rise, that right. would be pretty nice. And look at what this early home guard does on TF. Get back to lane, throw the wild cards, move out, get the kill, dive, immediately back to base, buy something else, get back, and you lose no minions or XP to your turret. Pretty, ama pretty amazing, actually. That's yeah, a lot so of stuff to do. It, it doesn't add the damage, but as long as you're working well in conjunction with your jungler, you'll have sufficient damage to get the kills, to make the plays, and Marin here just running rampant in the blue side jungle. There have not been enough wards, I think, from CJ over here because it seems like Marin's just constantly clearing it. It's and something you just don't expect, you know? Bengi's here. He's waiting for the counter gank, actually. Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, Marin. No ult. That's a bit of a close call there. I mean, yeah, no ult. Still nope. going to do a lot of damage with those cleavers. I guess so, man. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> he can see him with the ward. Yeah. Nice trade there from Marin. Rek'Sai was there to back him up, should need be. Yep. And man, life just cleaning that warden tri brush, I guess. Ah, Bengi looking to make another play. He's going to come in onto Shy, but oh, a little bit late. Shy backed off just in time. Yeah, Marin here, he went for the early Merc Tread, so he has the tenacity to cut down on a lot of the Rune Prison spam. Yeah. Which is why he wasn't worried about playing around with Shy when he still had. Uh, when he did not, rather, have his ultimate up. And with those Rise nerfs that came in a little while ago, too, those Rune Prisons lasting a little bit shorter anyway early on. Well, yeah, especially since you're not even maxing W anymore. Yeah, you exactly. can't. You have to max the Q. So that big, big, constant CC Rise doesn't come in until much later in the game. Very true. Bang farming pretty equally. Oh, and they may have caught Wolf. Yeah, they did with the Emperor's Divide. Bengi coming in, trying to make a play here. Wolf pops his ultimate, flashes into the blue buff pit. Bengi on the run as well, too. Yeah, Vigor's coming up, though, so they can't pursue this too hard. Yeah, uh, getting the flash and the ult out of Wolf, though, is pretty nice. Yes, it is. Uh, just more deep wards. Uh, Trick has been doing a very good job of keeping that side of the jungle warded and under control this entire game. Meanwhile, top side much more in the favor of SK Telecom. Sheen finally done for Faker. He's getting a little bit more damage now. But yeah, Coco, the wave clear is getting better too, which is nice. Yeah, Coco's still firmly in control of this mid lane. Oh, Marin. Ahead on CS. <laughs> Interestingly, Trick doesn't have that much CS when compared to, to this Rex side. He's been trying to make a lot of plays in lane, which is a bit odd to see from a Nunu, but yeah, you're right, he hasn't been farming, and I suppose when he goes to his top jungle, he oftentimes finds that the camps are missing. Yeah, it's been a lot of denial, I think. You're absolutely right there, Doha, from the Mundo. There looks like they will actually get their blue buff this time around, and they'll still have time to set up for the Dragon, but nobody to defend Vision as SKT starts to ward up that area in advance. So this game is very... Very powerful late if CJ can actually get into a team fight because they have the Nunu, the Blood Boil with both the Azir and the Kog'Maw terrifying. There's no doubt that this is an epic amount of damage coming out of CJ Entis, but will they ever be able to get in range is the question. And as long as SKT can continue to stack these dragons and get to the dragon first, they can just kite. Well, they've got all the vision they really need to do that so far. Would in the blue buff pit. Yeah, Marin may just be able to take the top turret right there, and that would really free him up to be more active when this dragon comes up. He's got his teleport anyway, so he's fine. Yep, yeah. and he's already got the MR too. That's going to be the real kicker against CJ, who is incredibly magic damage heavy team. Yeah. All right. CJ trying to get to this dragon. They really could use it. Spawns now. Bengi backing off into the blue buff pit. Looks like they may just try to hand that over to Faker first for anything. Faker, not with full health here. No, he has been poked out. Kind of the story of this game. Yep. 
Twisted Fate not having an easy time against the Azir. CJ not going for that dragon, though. They're going to go back for the turret. And definitely going to do a lot more damage to it. Well, he has the gold card locked in. He just wants Azir to stop throwing sand soldiers at his tower. Uh, oh. Doesn't seem like it'd be effective when you think about yeah. it. But it works. Oh, Trick takes Rift Scuttler. That's nice for CJ. Yeah, so SKT, they don't have the priority on this objective. We do see both Trinity forces done for Kog'Maw and for Corky. Identical CS for the AD carries. And CJ should be able to play this one patiently. As long as they have that vision, Faker's going to have to recall right now. Marin chunked out a bit in this top side. Went for a little bit of a jungly mission, but he is way up in CS. And remember, too, not all CS is created equal. He's getting a bunch of additional money thanks to his machete, and they're going to go for it. Yep, Trick is right there, too. They might try to steal it. Mad Life trying to harass on the side. Space is going to be able to poke SKT. I mean, Teleport coming here. in for CJ. Yeah, Coco needs to get there. Trick comes in, tries to steal it. Bengi gets it anyway. There goes Trick and SKT deciding not to chase it. They don't need to. Uh, they saw and they saw Coco coming around the side on the Azir, so he's going to go right into the mid lane Shortest and push that up. Shortest teleport ever. So if Coco could get a flank right there, maybe, just maybe, that would work out very well for SKT. Trick gets a little trigger happy and goes into the pit with the flash. I'll try to be a hero there, but SKT denying that dragon steal. Well, I'm starting to get worried about how unkillable Marin is going to be, even though, and, and I'm saying that against a high damage composition of Kog'Maw, Rise, and Azir, but he is just getting mountains of money right now. Yeah. I mean, if you, it says 157 CS, but with the amount of jungle camps he's taken, it's probably pushing like the equivalent of like 180 CS or something like oh, that. Oh yes, definitely. Not Absolutely. more. So that is. Yep, see so there's another 97 gold right there. <laughs> yeah, huge amounts of money. The Gromp buff going to be doing work against uh, champions like uh, Kog'Maw too. Yep. And the Magic Resist is very efficient against Kog'Maw because a lot of that percent HP damage before he gets that Blade of the Rune King is magic. Sure enough, well, they're trying to catch Coco here. Coco, can he get away? There's a Flash Emperor's Divide, pushes Bengi under turret. Oh, Faker barely misses, misses him. It. Yeah, very low Faker. Wow, goes for the Flash Gold card. He's got the kill. Trick trying to chase, but no Flash. Faker, can he get away? Pops at Ghost, meanwhile, Space oh. and Mad Life caught now. Oh no, the Faker distraction is real. Here comes Shy though, Root Prison. That's going to be at least a kill for CJ. Now turning on SKT. They may have overextended. I think they really overextended. Bang, can't quite kill Mad Life, but Trick can certainly take out Bang. There's a Flash. Can he get there in time? Wolf trying to get there. Snowball! Oh. He got him. And Wolf! Wolf! They're going to kill him too. Space gets one. And so, one for four. Man, Marin taking that turret nearly. These but fights have been so very close. Jeez. I mean, Bang definitely had a chance to live there. They're going to take at least one tower in the mid lane, probably two, because they have a Kog'Ma with the... Oh, nope, they're going to back off immediately. Now, Marin didn't have his teleport ready. Yeah. Of course, neither did Chai, but they dove so deep. And if we take a look at this, I mean, they get the knockup. Faker sees that Nunu's coming in behind him, and he decides, well, if I'm going to die, I'm going to go out like a hero, flash forward, get the final kill. But then everyone starts going aggressive. I wish we could see this play right here. Wolf going to knock up space, and they get the exhaust early onto him, but Mad Life kites it back. Great Glacial Fisher to stick everybody into the yeah. choke point. Summoner and Trick just too. turns around, manages to get back, and that last auto doesn't kill Mad Life. Bang here with the Valk, then the Flash, and Trick decides, I've got Blood Boil. Goodbye. Boom. Deadly Ball of Snow. So, with that though, CJ may have just uh, pulled ahead in terms of kills, but they're still behind in terms of gold. Before that fight, SKT was looking at about a, uh, a 2,000 gold deficit, or uh, advantage rather. Now they're up by just about 1,000 and they still have those dragon stacks, but that is the thing that's really going to keep them in this game. That is what they have to focus on. They cannot give up dragons. But if they can just keep holding on to the dragons, they may be able to pull it out. They also have a very good 1-3-1 one, one split push with Mundo and the Twisted Fate. And again, it's like you mentioned too. I mean, the only reason CJ is winning these fights is because SKT is pushing too far in, you know? And if SKT 
Just kites, they will have an edge, but yeah. this is gonna be a bottom tower. Nearly taken by yeah. CJ. They'll probably get it before too long. And we talk a lot about, uh, I suppose, the other side of the coin here, Doe, is that while we, we're talking about how SKT has this engage advantage, they have a lot of disengage, they can kite, they can live through what CJ's putting out, they don't have the highest amount of damage in the late game. They got a Mundo and a TF and a Corky. This is not going to be anywhere near as threatening as CJ's. Oh, yeah, of course. CJ is going to have tons more damage. Wow, Bengi manages to get his blue in. Now, because of that, SKT denies both blues because Marin actually got the other one. And here comes the, uh-oh. Oh, they're getting out of there. They're going to go on to Shy. They see an opportunity there. Oh, Madlife was... comes in with another great glacial fissure right at the end. May end up paying for it, but saves Shy, and that is pretty important. Wow. Here comes gets Coco. Gets the stun. Faker is going to die. Faker's just dead. There's nothing he can do. Wolf gets a knockup, but I don't think Faker can get away from here. Too much damage coming in. They're at least going to get Wolf. Marin trying to slow people to Cleaver, but Faker, one more ult. Yep, that'll do it. Wow, SK Telecom it just keeps overextending. Yeah, they do. Faker looks like he's getting pretty pissed off, actually. Oh, I would be too, man. I mean, they could have this game well, they in a much okay. better position. Okay, I mean, we can say that, and the Baron is going down in favor of CJ, but they did get two turrets off of that, but no one really yes. here. Marin has his ultimate. He's about back <laughs> up, but this is going to be a Baron for CJ. Yeah, I mean, Marin trying to distract people, but how much can he really do? A lot of low health members for CJ, though. Marin's ult has almost ran out. I think it's another occasion of CJ, or SKT just pushing too far. It's a Mary Marin chase. Shy, chilling, smited, and they're yeah, gonna try to get I a kill he, there. He's gonna try. Shy's still a little bit weak yep. in this wow, game. Wow, look at Marin! Holy cow! Jeez. Marin kills Trick. No kidding. Makes it out. Are you kidding me? Oh, Marin still here. He's gonna Marin, die eventually. He, he could have just backed away, Marin. All right, just could just backed away. He could still back away. Oh no! Nope, ultimate from Rise. And that's it. But SKT, again, they get onto a tower, so they have a Baron, but they actually get three turrets for this. Okay, so they gave up, I mean, that was a okay. lot that just happened right there. So they gave up some kills, but they actually took three turrets. They're gonna get the third dragon, and two if, out of this. If they can get the third dragon, Marin is 22 seconds, they're gonna try and burn this down. Oh uh, yeah, they'll get it. They're gonna get it, there's not enough there, they don't have a jungler there to actually prevent this from being stolen. Ooh. So three dragons for SKT. As CJ gets the better end of some of these of some of these fights, but they lose a lot of turrets. And yes, they get the Baron, but are they gonna be able to actually get towers off of this as the gold is pretty much identical? They're gonna try and take a red buff and then transition into a tier one and top. It looks like SKT is not gonna have a chance to defend this. Marin is really tanky, though. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, and he's going to be getting even more tanky soon. Looking for that uh, Randuins, it looks like. Well, Coco takes a turret here, and CJ with that Baron. We'll see how much they can get out of it. They might just be able to equalize. Uh, Faker in the mid lane right now, just trying to push, push, push as best he can. Are they going to give up the tier two? They don't have great wave clear. Here we they go. They don't want to. Coming in, Faker trying to come from behind. Actually just landing underneath the turret there. So they save their turret for the moment anyway. So much poke damage from the Kog'Maw. Oh, wow, they're just going to recall. No, they won't. Gold card onto Trick. Trick may be in a little uh -oh. bit of trouble. He's pretty tanky, though. Oh, Trick playing that a little bit fast and loose. He's going to be able to, well, be able to heal with the consume, but still yep. not ideal. Thank you coming back in with the Void Rush. Yeah. Yeah, CJ may have run out of gas here after Trick tried to zone behind the tower. I guess so. Well, you know, CJ is a team that, when they're on, what's frustrating about them is that when they're off, they are off. But when they are on, we remember this team nearly went to MSI. They took SKT to the brink yeah. in the spring. It basically took that big hero play from Marin's Maokai in the mid lane to actually make an opening for SKT. But Well, yeah. I mean, there was also, and after that, uh, Bengi's rec side, too. Yeah, Bengi. Had to come into that series and kind of win three games in a row. Very memorable. Obviously, the pressure not so high right now. It really is kind of irrelevant whether SKT wins or loses this game. It's much more relevant for CJ. Yeah, that's true.
I mean, SKT has a chance to get plenty more wins, and I mean, they're already in the finals anyway of this season, so not a whole lot of worries for SK Telecom. But still, you want to keep that streak alive. Looks like CJ won't be able to keep this bottom turret alive, but well, SKT may lose their top tier too. Yeah, the they Baron will. is almost stalled out here. Marin doing some work in the split pushing department. How much longer do we have on this? Oh, the Baron's gone. It's Oh, uh, no, it's not. Uh, we nearly. haven't clicked on the CJ members yet. Should be gone soon. Well, I think if you if you're SKT and they only get one tier one at, off of a Baron and you and a Baron and you took four turrets during that same period and a dragon, you're gonna be pretty happy with that trade. Obviously, it's it's relatively even, uh, but in the end, just out of that kind of disaster for them to pull so many objectives back into the game is, is rather remarkable. Now, Baron is gone. It's just kind of bugged where we see Yeah, the, I was curious about that, actually. Yeah. yeah. Baron definitely down on CJ despite the rotating purple thingies. And the Dragons. Again, yep. SKT. They've got a couple minutes, but they're going to get a fast track at a possible fifth Dragon because they got it so early. Right, 3-0 to zero right now. So CJ's got a long, long way to go if they want to ever contest in Dragons. I have to fight for these coming up. Uh, with all those turrets down, though, it does become much harder to push forward and get that advantage because they lack a Tier 2 in the mid lane and in the top lane. So they have to go pretty darn far to get up into the range to contest that dragon, and in the meantime, it makes deep warding a lot easier for SKT. Yep. But they, CJ must contest this next dragon. Well, it's a minute 30. Nearly identical timings for both this is a very and dragon. This is a very early fifth dragon, possibly. Uh, uh, we're gonna be looking at, what, 34 and a half minutes or so? If SKT takes it immediately. Yeah. Faker on the run here. Not having to burn the ghost just yet. Doing a pretty good job of dodging those ultimates from space. Well, he is pretty speedy with these level two boots, so it's not going to be as much of an issue to do so. Yeah, and you can see SKT just, they really want to push, but CJ's pushing back a bit harder right now. They need to get this dragon. Marn can teleport down anytime he wants. Yeah, Bengi actually just pushing forward and then using the Void Rush to get back to his team. Yeah. And Marin splitting into the top side. Space is going to get the Scuttle Crab, and CJ has some time to push up the bottom lane, but not a whole lot. So will SK Telecom, yeah, they, they can just threaten Baron. It doesn't really matter too much if CJ gets this first dragon, if SK Telecom gets dragon in exchange, or Baron in, in exchange for it. I think I think SKT would much rather have the dragon. Of course, but, but if, if, it, if it goes this way... You really don't want to fight it straight up at this point. And Becky can't really recall right now either because he's still waiting on that Void Rush to be back. Yeah, well, marin has got that lane pushed all the way up to the inhibitor turret now. Okay, so CJ just wants to commit to a tier two. Okay. Nice play. They've got so much tower damage. Yeah, they'll Great get it siege. pretty easily. C wow. CJ's composition is so good for siege. Blood boil, Kog'Maw, and Azir is just ridiculous how fast they can kill those turrets. Wow, Marin going in on the Shy, going in and using that challenging spite, pushing in. Marin pops the ultimate. Shy Holy could be in cow. a little bit of trouble here. That damage forces the flash from Shy. Chunks him Man. out too, so he's gonna have to go back to base. That means SKT has a little more time to get up. Okay. No, nope, no. Nope. They see space at this objective. Yeah, he's been is doing Faker it by gonna himself. go down there though? Nope, they're gonna go for the Baron. Yep, they are, but Space already on his way up there. I don't know if SKT can do this. They're gonna have to try to fight it. Baker goes into the gold card onto Mad Life. Oh. Mad Life, are they gonna get him before the ult? They did. They got him before Mad Life could ult, and CJ has been so reliant on that in fights this game so far. Marin wading into the oh, enemy team shy. right now. No ultimate. Shy gets trapped completely by SK Telecom. Trick gets hit with a big ultimate from Nunu. That's going to be a big problem for SKT, but will it be enough? Space doing so much damage along with Coco, but there's a double kill from Bengi. Bengi. Heal, Summer Heal will wow. save him. 
He made oh, it out. Okay, that was such a huge fight. They, out, they baited it very nicely. Faker actually is going to have to just skip his recall right there. They don't oh, have wow. enough HP. Marin but now Marin got in. his ultimate back up. They might be able to do this. Marin waiting in. Bang, Faker. Iper survived. They're going to try to take out Faker, but Bang gets the kill anyway. Space in a lot of trouble, and there's a double kill for Bang. Rek'Sai back in action again, and they could potentially go for this Baron. Absolutely huge. There's no TP on Shy right now. Faker pushing up the mid lane. Bengi is back to full HP with the Void Rush. So they come in. Marin just waited there. He knew he didn't have much time left on his ultimate. Waited, popped it, got the HP back to make the play. And SK Telecom coming back. They're going to get a Baron this time around. And what a great play. They didn't overcommit to the, taking the Dragon. They played around with the Vision. They set up the Baron beautifully. And Mad Life basically just had to face check that. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can yell at Mad Life here, but he did the safest thing. He tries to pop the Winter's Bite. Remember, there's not a great way for them to check that, honestly, especially when Faker could just pop out of a brush with a gold card flash. Oh, and Shy's engaged. Yeah. just totally derailed by that, Basically, too. it was also a bad teleport by Shy. There were two factors to that for CJ, and SKT was able to isolate him and kill him. And at that point, there's really not so much they can do. And this is the problem with CJ Entis' composition. When they don't have that engage, it just sort of falls apart at some critical moments. The fights have still been so close every single time. I mean, there were about three members of SKT near death. Yeah, it's a very exciting game. Very exciting. I mean, there were there have been like a lot of sort of facepalm moments in this game too, where people are overextending or uh, misplays are being made. But hey, but that makes it exciting. So that Baron that Baron setup from SKT oh. was beautiful. Yeah, be careful. There's a Kogma on that rush. Oh, not anymore. SKT jumping out to a 5,000 gold lead. It's at the point in the game where it doesn't matter as much, and like we mentioned before, CJ's team is going to be much higher damage in the late game. Yeah, I was wondering, you know, Doa, why was Marin's Mundo ban the other day? And I think we're seeing why. Well, it certainly seems to handle this rise. I mean, if you can handle Shy's rise, the it's shies. a bit of a surprise. But guys, <laughs> he supplies. The cleavers. He supplies CJ with their demise. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to break up your rhyming, but I failed. Yeah. All right, so still no uh, thorn mail for Marin. Has a G, oh my, G has a GA. <laughs> well, that's a Mundo that's going to be pretty hard to kill and then kill again. Yeah. 3,800 HP. Yeah, like you do. Like you do. That challenging smite doing so much work too. Yeah. Even though it, even though it was nerfed, uh, still makes sense right here. Still enough, and enough is good enough. Oh, well, Marin just pops. Not the ult. He's, he doesn't even need it. SKT needs to be a little bit careful here. I foresee a big Coco play if he ever gets down there, or a big Faker play. It's Perhaps like Faker and Coco see, see each other. Bang. Perhaps. Getting some damage down onto that tower with this Baron buff. Cannon Minion doing work. They're not making a whole lot of headway, though. CJ clearing this out pretty effectively with the Kog'Maw. Yeah, but Dragon up in two minutes now. If they can keep the pressure on for just a bit longer, and they've got maybe another 10 seconds of Baron buff, they can fall back slowly, take the jungle, and get ready for this Dragon, potentially. Yeah, they, they just didn't get very much, though. Uh, they tried the 1-3-1, one, one, but there's enough wave clear from CJ that it they couldn't really get much of anything off of that Baron. Sure, they got a gold lead off of the Baron in the fight afterwards, but that's about it. And they need a gold lead uh, to match the damage of CJ. And I feel like the biggest thing SK got out of that Baron was not having CJ with the Baron, <laughs> yes. which is a big deal. I mean, I if mean, CJ had the Baron. You might be confused because Space actually looks like he has a Baron buff right now, but he doesn't. Nope. No, CJ, they just have the the Baron visual buff. No, nope. Trick doesn't. Coco's got it, though. <laughs> he, uh, it's because, is, is it because he hasn't died yet? I believe oh, no, that did. is the case. I thought they did die, though. In that last fight, uh, wasn't that post Shy and Mad Life died. They got space too, didn't they? Uh, they yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what's up Who with this. Who knows? Yeah. Mad Life definitely died, so he yeah. still has the buff. Well, back to Dragon setup time. Looking yeah. good for SKT. They've got Wolf 
on the way. They've got a lot of vision, too. If there's as as dangerous as they can make it for CJ, the better. The more dangerous, the better. Well, one thing that's interesting is if we take a look at Bengi's build, he's gone for an Infinity Edge. Interestingly, CJ does not have any armor. So without the armor, this Corky actually is going to do a large amount of damage compared to what we might normally see from a Corky. Oh, and he's building, he's building into magic resist right now, which is very smart. Yep, and there's the dragon going down very quickly for SK Talagar, they're going to get it, and that's going to put them on that five dragon pressure. No contest from CJ, really well played by SKT out of that Baron buff. Well, their shot calling, I think, was really set up well here. They, yeah. they took their advantages, they knew if we just look at the wave control from, from SK Telecom in this game, Marin's been able to keep Shy occupied. And then when it's too dangerous for someone else to go and prep waves, they just have Bengi go do it deep in enemy territory, and then he just ults right back into his own side of the map. Yeah. So it's been it's been very intriguing to watch them set up for some of these vision plays because they've been creative in how they're executing. Well, Marin and Faker both 3,000 gold ahead of their lane opponents here at this point. Nice little lead. Marin's got Thorn Mail now. Uh, Marin's also about to pass the Flame Horizon. Yes, he is. Uh, he's maxed out in terms of really what he's going to be able to do here, except for be awesome and buy a Sorcerer's Elixir so that Kog'Maw takes true damage from his Thorn Mail. <laughs> true. I mean, Iron Elixir is fun because it makes you huge, but it's better to make Kog'Maw take true damage when he hits you. <laughs> I guess. No, it probably isn't, but. <laughs> I'd like to think so. Oh, I think it's great. Go for it, man. Well, goodbye, Azir turret. Not sure about the use of the Azir turret right there. Maybe a bit more useful to hold on to that for a time. Uh, okay. When you want to push forward for the Baron because now you basically, without the Azir turret now, you can't keep the wave in the mid lane at tier one while you want to actually try and deal with this Baron that might be coming through in 35 seconds. Yeah, and we saw Faker use his ultimate to go to top lane just to push that wave all the way up to the inhibitor turret so they could set up for this Baron more comfortably. Yeah, his ult's on a very short cooldown, too. Exactly. Now, so yeah. it's not that that big of a concern. It will be up probably about 20 to 30 seconds after the Baron well, is. Yeah, it was smart. You can't do that Baron if you're being pushed up in top lane. Marn still has that teleport. May want to start heading towards Baron, though, if he doesn't want to have to use it. I was just going to recall. Okay. And getting caught out by Trick, Ooh. actually. Yeah. Trick looking for an opportunity. Certainly has TB, not TB, had a bad TB. thing. Yep, that's right. Marin coming in from behind in space and a lot of trouble. Wolf comes in for the knockup. And here we go. Marin all over the CJ team right now. And SKT coming in as well. Bang. Safe in the back. Faker safe in the back as well. Two kills already. Oh, the bot lane is gone. And there it is. Trick knocked up as he tries to get away. Barely gets to ult before he's down. And SKT, whoa, they took a lot of damage from Shy though. They need to be careful. Coco could turn this around. Man, Shy did a ton there. Yeah, and they kill wow. Wolf, but the critical members for doing this Baron is still a three for one at the end. SK Telecom saw that moment of weakness, and they were able to strike. They have to get back, I though. I don't think they can do Baron, though. Uh, Shy will just wreck them. Uh, Shy really isn't that tanky, though. He doesn't have any armor. I, to deal with Bang. I guess, but I feel like if you get in the Baron bit, Coco and Shy are going to completely destroy you with AoE before you can really react. Well, we're going to find out, probably. I guess we will. A lot of people have gotten their health back, though. So it's not that same situation it was a moment ago. But here we go, Shy. They're going to try it out. Baker pops that ultimate anyway. Empress Five pushes Marin back in there. Bang trying to get away, but Shy's all over him. Here comes Faker. Can he save his AD carry? Looks like he can. Oh. Bang barely living. He had to, have, had to have like less than 50 health. Bad life is back, but more like sad life. Yeah, and they're chased off of the Baron. Now they don't have the gate. They don't have TP, and they don't have Void Rush. So Marin is going to have to stay in this mid lane right now. CJ can still burn down that Baron very quickly, but it would be a risk, to say the least. Yeah, and Bang's already heading back towards it, so CJ's not going to get a chance to do this one. Shy's still down for 30 seconds, so SKT can keep threatening this and maybe pick up another kill or two. Yeah, they're just going to go it. for it, actually. Okay, All right. their AD carry's not there. Marin not doesn't yet. have his ultimate. He's almost there, though. Yeah, they can't really do this. Shy is such a big part of CJ's damage, though. Yeah, they're not going to do it. Yep. Okay. 
Don't know about re-engaging right there when you don't necessarily have that ultimate available. You can see Faker getting close to that six item, going for a loot and Zeko. Oh, they're in trouble. Their I inhibitor might just get taken out here. CJ pushing ahead. I guess they're not quite as close as I thought they were. But they can turn onto this Baron. They uh -oh. force some recalls. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. CJ with a quick turnaround. Yeah, have they, they found an opportunity? Bengi's going to need. They can do this need. so fast. If they see Faker, they're going to start it 100%. They have Consume. They have Blood Boil. This Baron is rapidly disappearing. Faker can ult, but he can only get halfway there. Zoning out Bengi. Can Bengi possibly get in? No, he doesn't get in soon enough. Here comes Wolf, though. Marn and Bang. But they need Faker. They need damage. Bengi, what can he do? Not much right now. And CJ just backing away. Faker is there, but he needs to be careful that he doesn't get caught. And that was very smart of CJ. Back away from the Baron. If they tried to engage onto SKT, SKT would have kited them forever. Now CJ with the Baron. Remember, they've got the Siege composition. This is exactly what they need. But fifth Dragon's going to be up in 30 seconds. Yeah, but will Holy SKT cow. will SKT get a chance to take this, though? Because if CJ just bulldozes down the mid lane, they may be giving up an inhibitor in exchange for fifth dragon. Is that worth it? Yeah, it's risky. They could give up their whole base for fifth dragon with how fast this CJ and his team can break down their turrets. Yeah, very true. So is there any way SK Telecom can fight this? I mean, there is. If CJ commits to fighting them at the dragon. Banshee's vote for shot. If CJ's smart, they're just going to stand in the mid lane. Yeah, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. So far, anyway. Ward Wars for the moment. Dragon is up. SK Telecom moves towards it. CJ follows. They're feeling a bit intimidated by this. That fifth dragon certainly better for team fights at least than the Baron buff. CJ doesn't have the good engage though. That's the thing. And there's a scuttle crab, a speed shrine there to help them out. That's dragon right. Dragon is life. Wolf is looking for the They flank. started it. They started it. SKT going for it. CJ, it's now or never. Oh, They've got that Baron buff. They don't Wolf know Wolf coming from there. the side. Wolf coming from the side. He's trying to come from behind. Coco goes in. He gets in. He knocks Mad Life out. Dragon taken by SK Telecom. A three man knock up from Wolf and SKT. Oliver CJ. Shy doing a lot of damage though. And it looks like SKT just barely has enough. I think. No, they don't. Bang is low. No, CJ turns it. There's the double kill. Martin is the only one left. And that's it. It's over. CJ should be able to win the game. And so, as the season draws to a close, CJ will take their first best of three off of SK Telecom. Oh, Marin is huge. Can he, he has be the to hero? Be an absolute hero. He here. was I the don't hero think before. He can't do it though. I don't think he can this time. No, there goes the inhibitor. Can he hold him off for 30 seconds? I doubt it, man. They can just ignore him. All those minions, and that is it. Marin gets taken down. The GA is not going to make a difference. First inhibitor turret. First Nexus turret down. Marin down, second Nexus turret, and CJ Entis has found a way to finally topple the Titan. SKT is defeated 2-1. GG. a crazy game right there. CJ no, Entis kidding. just pulling it out. And we saw some very creative Baron plays. Unfortunately for SKT, they overcommitted to that Baron in the end. They tried to keep going for it, and that gave CJ a little bit of a window, a window which they took to win. And that means CJ snaps SKT's win streak at 21 best of threes. You know, it had to end some, some time. It was nearly a season and a half of pure match wins for SK Telecom here in Korea, but it is over. CJ Hentis takes it. Wow, what a series. Very, very close they, in the end. Yeah. And wow, CJ looking pretty happy after that one on the other side. You see right now. <laughs> oh, tears in the booth for CJ. The coach so happy. <laughs> God, calm down. It's just a regular season win there, buddy. I know, but, but to beat SK Telecom. Especially because of the playoff race right now. Yeah. CJ really could use that win to make themselves continue to be relevant if they want to go to Worlds. Well, and they... CJ, a massive win. Coach Sun is just pumping up the audience <laughs> now. <laughs> well, with that win, CJ does move into third place above KT for the moment anyway. How long will it last, though? The end of the season is certainly going to be <laughs> tense. I mean, SK Telecom, yeah, I mean, you lose your streak, but it doesn't really change anything. They're still going to the finals, still probably going to Worlds, but got to feel good. If you're 